Councilman Clevenger, would you lead us, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome aboard. You betcha. Okay. Uh, did um, everyone have a chance to uh, take a look at the minutes from November the 27th? I move to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to approve by Smith, a second by Goodman. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand, and it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Board of Public Works and Safety minutes mm -hmm. for uh, November the 8th and 22nd are included in your packet for information only. Uh, moving along. Uh, I apologize for the not on your agenda. I don't believe. Um, What's that? I don't believe it's on your agenda. If you print it or not. We need to make sure, we need to set the date for December's meeting of 2019. So that I could put it on the calendar. Because it falls on Christmas Eve. Next month. Next month. So council needs mm -hmm. to decide if you want to set it like we did this year and put it the week ahead. If you want to do it the week after. Because technically the next Tuesday is December 31st. So, I mean, if you want to meet on New Year's Eve. <laughs> um, so, but we need to set that date so I can set the calendar for next year and get that out to the media. Is she out of order? <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew you were going to move on. I'm teaching her in a while she's doing it. Does it matter what, uh, to your it seniors matter to, to be? Either way. It, it makes no difference That's to me. It's, it's a pleasure of the council. We, we, yeah. Does, Does that work? work for everybody? Yeah. Okay, so that would be December 19th, 2019. I believe. 17th. 17th. Sorry, 17th. Okay. Thank right. you. So be able to thank you, Sean. Okay, um, unfinished and old business. Uh, area plan and uh, BCA board appointments. And Casey Coles. Casey, would you like to give us uh, some information regarding those two areas? I gave all of you uh, copies of our rosters. And um, what Heather does is she puts who the appointee is for all of our members, just kind of an FYI, but in the case of the city, we have two members. Uh, Trent Powell is only a BZA member, and um, and I say that because uh, Bob Canada is on both, Planning Commission and BZA. So Trent Powell, um, I had asked him if he would like to be reappointed, and he stated yes, he would be happy to be reappointed, if that was the council's pleasure. Uh, so that's- Is he a council appointment or a mayor? He is a council appointee. Okay. Both of these are council appointees. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bob Kennedy was our second member, and he is on both the Planning Commission and the BZA. You have two citizen members that sit on the Planning Commission, and they have to be um, completely citizen Joe, not elected or appointed to any other board, because once they're appointed as a citizen member to the Planning Commission, inadvertently they are also your BZA <coughs> member. So they sit on both, and that's by state statute. So, and he is also a council member. He did not wish to be reappointed. He's been on the board um, a long time, quite a while, and a very valuable member. Sorry to lose him. A lot of expertise. <coughs> um, just a great character, but um, he wished not to be reappointed. Likes getting a little busy for him. So, I said I'd well, about that's, four that's, years. That's double the meetings too. With it two, is. Two point. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Does the council had any thoughts regarding the BCA and area planning appointment? Well, first of all, I guess uh, you talk about Trent. Would uh, council entertain a motion to let uh, Trent continue in that position? I'll make a motion on Trent Bell. Second. Okay, a motion made by uh, you're in second by Clevenger. Those in favor to let Trent continue, and it's unanimous. The second one. Any, any thoughts there? Well, I've asked around um, if anyone was interested.
interested. Uh, Mason, you know A.J. Brown, mm -hmm. of course, yep. close by. Um, he might have even been in your class, but he was interested in being, getting involved. So um, just a name. I don't know that there's a line of people wanting to get involved, but I just thought I'd let you know that there is someone interested in getting involved. I had someone approach me also. Good. Uh, David Rowe. That's uh, Tina's husband here. Uh, these aren't, uh, there, there's no political affiliations here. They don't, don't have to be Republican or Democrat, right? No, they don't. Normally what we look at is just try to find a nice mix <coughs> on the board of expertise. Um, you know, and then that way, no matter what petition comes in, you know, we kind of have the different expertises yeah. of within the members. Now, as you know, some of our board positions have to have right. a dedicated, yeah, either Democrat. They or used them. to, but they don't anymore. Okay. Good. And what expertise do you just you mean a diverse in their careers? Okay. Yeah. Well, gotcha. AJ is a foreman for Miller Pipeline. They do a lot of work for NIPSCO. So I don't know what um, David has, but it sounds like he could have a couple good candidates. Uh, a lot of it can come down to availability for yes. the meetings and such. Mm -hmm. They meet once a month. So if we have business, if we don't have business, then the meetings are canceled. Meetings are canceled. Yeah. And then the planning commission also meets once a month if there's business. So it would be at most two meetings a month. Is there a time of year that seems more busy for commissions than others? You know, the, the Rochester BZA really stays busy for the most part all year. This this year was surprising because in the beginning of the year, we, I don't think we had a meeting until March, um, which was shocking because the, the city BZA really has, normally has petitions every every month. Um, every once in a great while, we won't have business, but um, we don't have business this December, which is surprising. But um, the planning commission, it just depends on when there's a large project going on, uh, whether it's, you know, with the wind farm, you know, we have, we met a lot mm -hmm. last year. So now and there's been years we've only met twice. And you guys spend a lot of time going over your, your zoning ordinances uh, and amendments and stuff too, and that takes Right, we did time. that twice this year. We had two sets of amendments and the planning commission goes through all of that. They're in charge of recommending those amendments to you guys, to the legislative bodies. Only have one position, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, one. Uh, mm -hmm. The one position served on the two committees, mm -hmm. BCA, and then the area planning also. And basically, the difference, Casey, between the two two groups. Can you explain that? Mm -hmm. The area plan is um, there is they are the advisory group to all the legislative bodies when it comes to the ordinances and potential amendments. Um, they are the only body that can look at those amending the zone map, the zone ordinance, subdivision, and the comp plan, and then they send that recommendation to you guys. Um, they are also the only board that can look at subdivision petitions. So they look at and approve sub any new subdivision that comes in, any type of replat, which we have on our agenda tomorrow night, um, for the Wings Etc. group, you know, they're replatting that, and, or subdividing that into two lots. Um, so that's, the Planning Commission, their, their role is to really look at those codes and then interpret them. So if we have a situation where my, you know, someone doesn't like my interpretation, they don't agree with it, it goes in front of the board. Someone just wants to ask for an interpretation, they go in front of that board. Um, the BZA, they look at situations where the code doesn't fit a specific scenario to where a property. So I have something, a hardship on my property. I have a, um, year old tree and my well and my septic are situated in an area where I could build and meet all the setbacks that the code requires. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to ask for a variance to instead of tearing out the tree, my septic, and my well, I want to build on the other side, but I might not be able to meet the setback the way it's stated in the code. They go to the board and they say, hey, I have this practical difficulty. Can I please have a heart? Can I have a variance? Um, then they also approve special exceptions, which would be um, I'm in a residential area and I want to start a business. And the board will look at how that, um, how that interacts with the local 
residents, you know, as far as the, how the density and the traffic patterns, the parking and, um, you know, side, everything from sidewalks to, you know, all of that kind of good stuff. And they approve the special exception. They also look at administrative appeals. So when my office levies a violation, then, and if someone doesn't agree with it, I send Tom a violation, I say, you have too much trash, you need to take care of it. That person doesn't agree that it's trash, uh, to him it's yard art. He goes and he files an appeal and he goes in front of the BZA and he says, hey look, you know, the toilet in my front yard with flowers is actually, you know, my centerpiece for my landscaping, I don't see it as trash. And the BZA would look at what the file for the, um, for our office is, what the pictures are, and then they would determine whether or not the violation was credible or not. The BZA is the appellate portion of the process. I think we found out, at least I did, within the last couple of years, the Area Planning Commission sits and plays a rather uh, high role in the process. You're, you're subordinate to those to that committee, right? The uh, Area Planning Commission. They hire me. Yes. They yes. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people have thought that the commissioners were in that role, but the case is actually responsible for the Area Planning Commission. I am. It's a 13 member board. I have 13 bosses. How about that? They're all lovely. <laughs> That's great, they are, they is a great group, it really is. A lot of people are very concerned. Now you know what Ben Franklin thought of 13 colonies. <laughs> right, right. A lot of people wondered about the 13 members um, on a board when we did the area, but yeah. it really has worked out very well. They work very well together. <clears throat> and your chairman of that board, is that? Eric Strader. Mr. Eric Strader. Mm -hmm. And the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary, the executive secretary are all appointed every year. So. Anybody got any thoughts on candidates for that role? Are you, are you thinking of one role or, or two roles? Are you, are you well, thinking the, the individual one serves on, on both? both? Yeah, yeah. The in, one individual sense. serves in both capacities. Yeah, yeah it's not two separate roles. But it doesn't have to be the same person, does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this one does. And this one does. For what? Um, two capacities, I'm sorry. Right. Like, uh, currently, Bob Kennedy fills the role where he sits on both the Planning Commission and the BZA. Okay. So by virtue of being on the Area Planning Committee, you're on the BZA. Right. By state code, the citizen members on the Planning Commission sit on the BZA. Okay. And that's why we have 13 members, because we have four BZAs. So every entity, Fulton, if you want to share one, but... Rochester has one, Akron has one, the county has one, and Fulton, if you want to share one. So every single BZA has to have two citizen members. And that's why our board is so large. What is the impact if this seat is not filled in January? Um, just, if we have business, they wouldn't be able to sit and vote on it. Would, they have, would there be a quorum if there was not a she, well, She's saying that personally. Right, um, and the, they would the, they would still be they would still vote they'd still right. go on. Okay, so it's Correct. just that one person. Business would go on as usual. Business would go on as usual. Yes, <laughs> it, it's a three members quorum. It's five member board. Three members need quorum. It can be a little tough to get a quorum for the BZA. Yeah, sometimes it is difficult. So, that's right. You're the representative of the council. There, there, yes, there could be a. If it weren't filled by January, there could be an issue. You know, my we we have two names. I assume we've spoken and they're definitely in. But for me at this stage, I don't know who has what experience over the other. So you know, I'd like to I don't know, figure out more. And I don't candidates. know if we have a petition for January or not. We may not. Um, I really I don't know. The difference between the BZA quorum and, say, your quorum, is the quorum for the BZA is three, and there has to be three voting one way or the other. You know, a lot of boards, they'll say, we have a five-member quorum, but it's still majority rules. And on the BZA, it's not. It's, so you have to have three to actually have quorum, and you have to have three voting yes or three voting no. Otherwise, it's, an, it's considered a no vote. So. I give you. You all like a little time to sort out the two folks who've stepped up. I would suggest President Goodman. No. If you 
put together a two or three person committee to uh, reach out and be in the, you know be the interview committee for these these two and report that. You'd be like, Grandpa, what was paper? <laughs> we'll take a little intermission here for Tom's program. I know she's going to ask. She didn't even have a special. <laughs> Turn them off. She was early in the game. Watch her sometime. I just made the appointment in time. I just didn't bring him up and go, no, I'm not doing any of the same as justice. I agree with that. I'll yeah. we'll go with that. And I should know by the end of December if there's even a petition on January's, and I can let you know that. And if there's no petition, then <coughs> wait to bring it home. No, we can just say that Crystal uh, wants to have a vacuum, have, that she wants to go again, or are you going to say that you yeah, your name on her this evening? Or no? Well, no, that's right. the Akron Town Board. I mean, we don't know. Yeah, they take care they of that. They take care of okay. everybody else. Yep. All right, super. Sorry, this is just my okay. I was just looking at what's marked. It's drawing my attention. There you are. Okay, so that's the only one we have. Where Bob is, we have to fill Bob's position. Correct. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, are, you, are you thinking of a two or three person to see the reach out to him? Uh, that or we could sit down and come to a meeting of all of us. Do a lunch. Do a lunch. Mm -hmm. Is that volunteer to be on the committee? Yeah, for lunch. You buy it. Well, I'll be on the mayor. Are you thinking a meeting of the council? A no, lunch meeting lunch. Of the council? Where's Chris? Can you set that up? Yeah. <laughs> no. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I just need to because if you're thinking of a, a lunch, kind of an interviewing type lunch for the two candidates, as, as the whole council, or just the two or three? No, just three of us. If we go more than that, we have a quorum. Correct. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. And so it would be easier. We, and I don't even think we need to have the candidates came in. Come in. One of the main thing is, is we have to see who is available for the times the meetings are going, and who really right. wants to be. It. And then if we have a few names, we know the people. We can make a decision from then. I would think. Well, I was going to say another thing you could do is maybe come up with some questions. Um, each of you come up with some questions of these people that you might want a little more. Of information from other than their availability. Um, availability will probably be the toughest thing to come up with. You know, involvement in volunteerism. You know, yes. I have no idea. I know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but Let's just, work on that um, first. This is an unpaid position. This is a volunteer position. Volunteer. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Take your committee here. Yeah, Mason. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Moving on. Okay, and before we do get away from that, Marty brought up a good point. Uh, Karen was serving as the council representative to the uh, Area Planning <coughs> Commission. Is, uh, is it favorable that everyone would want Gary to continue in that capacity, or do you want to mix them around some more, the roles? It's up to you folks. Let's see, we just uh, have him do it. That's what we did with Karen. She, just, she was there, so now he's in her spot. He takes her spot. They meet again when? Uh, tomorrow? tomorrow night, yeah. but it's because they moved it up. It's normally the fourth. Is that all right? Yep. All right. I have a question. Do you, you, does the council want on the agenda for January the to revisit? So you kind of broached the subject tonight, the uh, reappointments of each of your commitments to the boards. So whether you guys want to retain where you're at or if you want to mix it up, would you like that discussion on the council agenda for next month? Well, I think would I think it would be in January where we talk about the uh, choosing of the president for the council. Correct. Also, Correct. wouldn't that be a good time to do all of that? That's what I'm just asking. If you wanted to do it tonight, do you want to put it on in January? thing on the agenda is the uh, area plan agreement that the county had uh, presented at the <coughs> last meeting uh, again involving Casey and uh, uh, they were uh, uh, wanting to uh, break the original agreement uh, and have 
have a paper performance situation. I think you all had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the program would be an evaluation of her activity relative to building condemnation and sidewalk work, anything that's not zoning, our ordinance work basically. And uh, at the end of the year, there would be an evaluation as to how much of her time, their time, her office spent in that area and we receive a bill. And the crickets fell over the crowd. Anybody? Well, I expressed at last meeting, it, I would certainly prefer having an agreement that involves Casey as opposed to trying to create a whole new department or uh, uh, office for the city based on her knowledge or involvement or abilities, I, I would think we would be smart to retain that as a council. Is there a back in the packet or is it just last time? I did not put it back in the yeah. that's why I came back. Um, I, I think that was kind of a consensus. Uh, we just wanted to take the extra time to just really dive in and see if there are any questions that came up. Well, if you remember right to, uh, what is it, two years ago now, when we captured uh, control of the seated funds, our portion of the seated funds, we made the statement at that time, you know, okay, any any items where you were using monies that we benefit from, we certainly are not going to be not willing to take a look at paying for bills for you to come up short now. And this was one area that was, was brought up, I know, at the well, as we stated then, uh, this goes hand in hand with the economic development. Well, yeah, you know, we're looking at a pretty substantial sidewalk program coming down the, the road and uh, not having a Casey around to be involved in that would be pretty rough. So. If, if I recall, Gary specifically wanted a little bit more time to, to look at it. I don't know if you have any thoughts or comments it um I did, with it. I did read through it and looked over it and I what I gather is based off of the 2017 numbers um, there was an extraordinary circumstance of like twenty five hundred dollars I think one permit but if you took that away I think it was around 15 it wouldn't take it down to 13. if you um, look at the estimated cost is it 50 50 some thousand, but the difference um, for us would be, you know, to pay someone $45,000, or it looked like we're paying them $45,000 based off that year approximately. And um, I don't think, I mean, even if you hired someone at 40,000, you have all the benefits you have to add to that. And so I don't think we could, um, I don't think we could do it at a better cost. Yeah, the 2017 example of the 47,000 something You've got uh, right there. Yeah, the 60%, if you use 2017 numbers, the 60% um, of the permits would total 57498 <coughs> But then the fees that we would collect from the electrical and plumbing registrations would and, come off of that. Mm -hmm. And the city building permit fees um, actually brought it down to 44648 and 75 Okay. Yeah, hey, I agree with and you. And not only that, that um, finding someone to, to beat the salary, mm -hmm. but you guys have been doing it for a long time and you know, we don't want to downgrade the quality of uh, you know, the service so yeah. with a newbie. <laughs> trying, trying to establish the learning curve there wouldn't be an easy task. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, I, yeah. Mr. Mayor, yeah. unless you have other comment, I'd make a motion to approve the uh, area plan agreement as presented. If, if I can stop you right there, you have one, one, one comment. That would be uh, adopted now, enacted next year, and the first pay would be the end of next year based on 2019? No, in this agreement, it was 2018 numbers. So it would be, um, this was actually, it actually talks about the payment would be, I think it's within 30 days mm -hmm. of signing 
for 2000. It was, yeah, 18 numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's retroactive to 2018. Mm -hmm. It's to pay for 2018. Mm -hmm. January 2018 and December 2018 to be paid within 30 days of both <coughs> parties signing this agreement. So it would be a matter of Casey getting your final numbers for 18 mm -hmm. in, and then we would receive an invoice. This really is a situation they're looking for money. Did, did we, so we had the agreement though in 2018 where we weren't paying, correct? The annual mm -hmm. okay. The current one. I, I was all for moving, starting in 2019, but um, yeah, the retroactive thing, that does put a little Which bit. It's another wrinkle in it then, it is. Just, yeah, it does. Yeah. If I may. What? Um, one thing to consider, because of the retroactive, this is not something that was in our 2019 budget. So we will either, um, if, if you move forward with this, I will be coming back to you for an additional appropriation because we did not budget for an additional, by the time it's all said and done with the sidewalks and everything, you're looking at over a $60,000 um, increase to what we've already approved. So. Um, with that said, because you've got the sidewalk, there was a site 19, I don't know, 58,000 roughly, just based on the rough numbers, and, and like I said, Casey's got to get her final numbers back together, and then there was the sidewalk 270, or is that the fees collected, refunded, uh, sorry, 1,900 for the sidewalks, and again, this was just from, I'm not sure when this was calculated. End of October, 1st of November, maybe? It wouldn't matter because it was all 2017 numbers. Okay, What's so everything's gonna change. Should we have the drops this year? We paid anything mm -hmm. drops this year? No. No. no we have the only thing that's been paid has been the fees collected. Casey, she collects all of our electric mm -hmm. licenses, our plumber's mm -hmm. licenses, and, um, the permit right. fees. What, and, and what have we paid Fedco? We paid Fedco a portion, right? The, they've been, their the agreement would have been 107,000. But, but we, we came up with an agreement and we paid that. Yes. I agree they're probably looking for money, but when we broke the interlocal agreement, we said, but we will pay what's fair. If, if we haven't paid our office anything, and we think this is fair going forward, it was probably fair for this year as well. So when we broke that agreement, we said, you know, we're not saying we don't want to pay anything. We will pay our share. Unless anyone remembers otherwise, but I mean, I'm not all for giving out money, but if it's what we verbally said and it's owed, it's what's owed. Well, we allocated all of our seated funds. No, um, and that's the other thing. I, I would <coughs> recommend using all of seated for this. I would recommend the council create a line item in their budget, whether it's <clears throat> the, it comes out of the general fund to fully fund this, because that's what had been done prior to the area planning commission being created, which would have been our building commission budget. Um, that was all out of general, uh, simply because see that um, if we have or want a future in trying to create economic development for the city, we have to have some available funds that we don't have already allocated to funding other organizations and other endeavors. So we've got to have some flexibility. Uh, you know, we've got a, the downtown partnership. They're wanting to move forward with projects. The only thing we have available to them are economic development funds. So if, the, if, if we do this, I would, uh, I would highly recommend that you not take all of this out of seating. I would recommend either it comes out of the council budget fully, and we can do an additional appropriation for that, well, we'll have to do an additional appropriation either way. Or we split it in half. And we take half out of general, we take half out of seed it. Because of FEDCO, um, we're also looking at that contract tonight as well. So that'll be, that, that money is already um, planned, per se, to be coming out of the EDIT money. And the economic development money is fluctuating. We're not guaranteed that it's always gonna be at the level that it is right now, because it's based on income tax. Um, so, 
that that would just be my recommendation just to protect the city moving forward you know with the different projects we have you know ted's got some some great plans that he's trying to get moving forward with some other projects sidewalks is a big one um, we've got some other opportunities that we're looking at so we just want to make sure that we have ourselves in a position that we're able to have um, some flexibility on what direction we go that, that would be my only recommendation and that uh, forty seven forty eight thousand dollars would be due January one. No, 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 no. Thirty, 30 days, days for the that it's signed. So basically, it'd be the end of January. So, but one thing I want to make sure that you're all clear about is, I mean, when you know this is what this says is that you would pay for two thousand eighteen with the numbers that are here, and you know what the numbers are. They're right here because everything is a year. It's it's a yeah. year in the past. It's yeah. always retro. You have to wait a year to get your figures. Right, because you have to wait a year for me to give you the right. numbers and say, hey, we only did 20% of the building permits for the city, so, you know, here's this amount. But then, according to this agreement, then in January, I would give Shada the 2018 numbers for what we did in 2018. So, 2017 was 60%, and it was these numbers, but then by whatever the date stipulated in here is, um, I would give shot and say, hey, you know, we did 52% in the city. So here's 2018 numbers, and here are all the fees that we collected. So here's what the percentage is, and then here's the fees that you would, you know, you would be reimbursed from that. So this, I just want to make sure you understand it's almost like a double, it'll feel like a double whammy because it's a late in the year, you know, with, with you guys talking about this. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then at the end of 19, going into January 2020, then you would get 2019 numbers. So. But we would. We're, but we're only going to pay for one in January. We're paying no. for 18. They're wanting 17 and 18. What this says is they wanted you to pay for January to December of 2018. Right. Right. So. But we would be paid that in January of 19. Yes, but then she would have numbers for 18 and give us our right. our so, so we're paying for 17. Right. You would pay for the year 2018 using 2017 numbers because there's no other way to calculate it except for one year previous. It'll always have to be a year behind using these calculations. Okay, we haven't paid anything this year. Right. And so we're going to pay, in theory, pay for this year in January, but then also have the numbers to pay for next year. So really, really according years. to this agreement, we should have paid this year's in January of this year. <coughs> You're a year behind. I'm, thank you for oh, clarifying that. I didn't catch that, but I appreciate that clarification. So um, if any way you explain it, we're gonna pay for two years, then, um, um, 2020, January 2020, we'll be paying for 2019. Um, mm -hmm. So we're looking, yeah. At, and I had just a couple questions, Shada. Um, mm -hmm. The you said in 2019 that wasn't budgeted. Mm -hmm. So are you talking about it wasn't budgeted for 18? Are are you talking about? In, Literally 2000, yeah, are you in arrears here? I'm trying to figure. No, we do our budget. We start our budget in the city in May okay. with the department heads bringing in to the mayor um, and me their request. The yeah. council uh, receives information in June and then we have a budget session in July. By the time we get, we have our public hearing in August and we adopt our budget by the end of September. Okay. So our, we are on, all municipalities are on what they call an 18 month cycle. So because when I sit down with the DLGF, I have to plan for an 18 month expenditure, not 12. Okay. Um, so we have already approved and adopted our budgets um, and taken it to the public hearing process by, by August <coughs> of every year. So when we have something like this that comes to us at this time of the year, at the end of the year after we've already gone through that, it is not planned for expenditure in the following year. Does that make sense? So that, that's why I was trying to say, because I'm still a little confused by what you said, because this says that we're being billed for 18. But they had to use an example of 17 numbers. 
right. in here the example was 17 numbers. Right, but you're going to give me the actual 18 numbers to pay on. We're not going to be paying two years. You would pay two years according to this. They, this agreement says you will pay for the services that the Planning Commission gave you in 2018. Which is good, which, yeah. Which is what 2017 numbers are used for, is to figure out what that amount is. Now, in January 2019, the permits that were, right. and the enforcement done in 2018, mm -hmm. is how you get the number for 2019 that is then paid for what services the Planning Commission would provide you in 19. Mm -hmm. so we're paying 18 in arrears, but 19, yeah. It's like at the tax. front of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's right. So we're going to be paying so 18 doubled. in right. January and we're going to be paying 19 later on. Right. It just happens That's to be the same month because you guys are talking oh, about 19 December. in January. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like if you'd been talking but, about this in August or September, mm -hmm. then it probably wouldn't be as confusing, but because it's December. That's why it's going to seem like a double dipper, but it's really okay. not so a double not. dipper. So it's going to be 18 and then right. 19. But it's that 17 is just. No, a, a number that's thrown out there to come up with numbers for the year. So and just get 18 in your mind. So when we broke the agreement, did we say we're not going to pay for area plan at all? No, we, 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 we said we, we, back, we took our seated funds back, and that was an agreement that was in place. And when you look at the agreement, we weren't, as I recall, we were not bound to cover. It was a county they were covering it. They were, they were absorbing, they were absorbing it all. And so and we, keeping the fees. We, and, and keeping the fees, and, and they were. So they were, and then we... We didn't break the agreement. Right, the county. The county I'm saying when the agreement was broken. But I, but did we not say we would pay for the fair, for the Rochester's fair share? Uh, the the verbiage at the time when we captured our seated funds were, uh, the, if we have some fund or some obligation that we would certainly entertain taking a look at taking care of that. We, that was verbally said. Okay. And, 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 and if we don't do this, you could really just stop doing anything for Rochester, right? The commissioners voted at not this past meeting, but the meeting before that if um, that they would terminate the agreement at the end of the year. Well, we'd be on our own for and you would, uh, yeah, for uh, condemning buildings and doing sidewalk work, basically. By statute, you have to take care of the zoning issues. Right, but it'd be all your building codes, your sidewalks, and your unsafe. I'm sorry, but I have I have a real issue with paying in this manner, especially now you just essentially doubled. Not you. It's essentially double, and we don't. I, I mean, I, I just sit and try to figure out where we're going to come up with that kind of money. We don't. We don't operate that way in the city. Why would it? We pay our bills and we we plan ahead. <coughs> um, I think if if they're going to enact this, it should have been that we pay for 2018. We get a bill in January of 19. We pay that, and we would pay for the, because that way. Casey actually has an opportunity to actually get the accurate numbers to us instead of basing them on numbers from two years ago and then we're getting hit in January, first of all, with, um, I'm gonna be writing a check in the red. I have a problem with that. What if it was set up to be paid biannually? You have six months of reporting. It, again, it's a budgeting process. The county goes through the same budgeting process we do. We should have been having this conversation last January, or this past January, February. Um, I would have to, I mean, I, I, if you guys, if, if, if your back's against the wall and you move forward with it, I'll have to figure something out. Uh, but additional appropriations don't start getting approved from the DLGF until March into April. Well, yeah, but going back to uh, breaking up how it's paid, if you paid it biannually or even quarterly, I know it would put more work on Casey to provide the information, but would that help? That, I don't think so, because she's she can They're not real numbers, here. though. It's not real time. 
it's like John was saying, it's like paying your property taxes. When you go in and pay your property taxes this year, you aren't paying for what was built this year. Right. You're paying for what existed Pretty last year. year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, paying, I, really, I can give you the numbers today for... But the or, first, first quarter of 2019, your activity, you could present a bill and that would be the 2020 payment. I mean, we can't pay that ahead? I, I, the thing with, you know, I'll, I'll go back on it. It's, you know, State Board of Accounts, whenever we pay a bill, we have to have an invoice for services rendered or product we received. Um, well, you would have. Well, in the, in the case that you're talking about, we would. But in the case that they're presenting here, we, they would be using, I mean, they, it would be services rendered based on 17 for the first payment, services rendered for 18 on the second payment. Both do within, basically going to be within two weeks of each other by the time it's all said and done. That's what I'm saying is if you, we can, I mean, like I said, we can do it. I just, it's concerning to me that um, that they have put us in a position that I'm going to be like a check in red. We got a question from the audience back here. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious if you could wait till January of next year and then you'd have 2018 numbers to go off of and then pay for 2018 and then just always pay retroactive so you have the numbers for the year before. Is that not an option? That's how it's set up. That's how it's set up. Mm -hmm. But they have numbers. They want us to pay for 2018 as well. Or because my understanding is that we're really right. paying for the year we're in we're using last year's numbers. Right. right. See, and and I, so I guess, they want us to pay for the year 2018 using 17 numbers, right? Pretty much right now. Yeah. And then they want us to pay 2018 numbers in January. But what was the agreement for 2019? But how can they ask us to pay for something when we had an interlocal agreement in place, yeah. though? When did we have? That's that's what I was wondering. When did that interlocal agreement break? What year? What happened? I mean, there's an agreement. Can't go back to your The interlocal agreement has not been broken. Yeah, it's okay. still in place. <coughs> that's why the, my have, office still enforces your. They've purpose. given us their intent to okay. terminate it at the end of this year. Yeah, I thought. But it was. I mean, this has been an. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't break it up. Yeah. It was, um, yeah. it was very clear that the one party or the other was going to pay the in writing. Then so can we, we, I say we start amend this document and say we'll pay for 2018 with 18's numbers. in January? And we're not going back to 17. That was my question. Is if, if, if we get the invoice for 18 in January and pay for it, the, the way that, that, <coughs> that, that was what I was concerned about, unless it's going to be something where we take these numbers and then you take the difference between the 17 numbers that they've given in the agreement in 18, and then, because it also says in here that they're gonna be cutting us a check back for the permit fees that they've receded in. So, was that how you, or are you planning on taking that off the top of what the invoice is? That's between you and Christina. I mean, if, you know, if, uh, between you and Christina, if Christina says, hey, the, you know, this way, you know, to pay for the 2018 years, these are the numbers. So for the services rendered in 2018, this would be what it would be. So I mean, if you and Christina looked at it and said, hey, look, it would total would be 58, you know, 546, mm -hmm. or 57, 498, but we owe you another, mm -hmm. you know, 12, 7, 12, 8, so just cut us the check for 44. 648, that's between you two, however you want to do it. I mean, if you want to literally get a check from the county, then just tell Christina, I want a check from the county. Right. And you would send, you know, I mean, that's, but I have nothing to do with this. No. I mean, as far as financial side of it, that's not my thing. Casey, excuse me, well, when is the deadline on this that we have to have this decision made and everything? Because I don't like when it's just, you know, that it, is that saying that we have to do this and we have to sign the papers and say, yes, we'll do We'll have this one in January and this one two weeks later in January. Is there no room for negotiation that we can say, okay, look, in January, yeah, we're going to do the 18, what they call 17, we're really going to be paying the 18. And okay, then as as the mayor was stating, we set another goal and say, okay, maybe in June, okay, 
we have this much, and then next uh, December we have this much to kind of give us a little bit of a burden if we're going to do something. And are we definitely 100% going to do this? Right, you know, you're, you're, you're hitting it right on the head, and, and <clears throat> hindsight is 2020. Back when, you know, I ran across town and presented the, uh, the new uh, memorandum of understanding uh, regarding the seated funds and control of the funds, and the comment was made then, well, you know, we've used those funds to support other things, including the Area Planning Commission. And, and yes, there was Burbies there. Well, yeah, we don't want to leave you in a bind or anything. Let us, you know, work together on that. What should have happened was, okay, the Area Planning Agreement now needs to change. We need to break that MOU and come up with this now that uh, we don't now that those funds aren't available to blend over into that area, which, like I say, hindsight's 2020 probably should have done that at that time. But now that agreement then continued to run until, until this, uh, this came about. Well, if you break it, then you would have been enforcing your own code. And that was the point of not breaking it. Well, no, but I mean the, 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 well, so the, you the agreement pretty order. much reads that it's in place until one or one or, or both parties decide to break it. That's the first thing that has to be done in writing. It has to be broken, and then whatever agreement's put in place. Why can't there be a set fee from this day forward for services for the next fiscal year? We're going to, the city's going to pay the county X amount of dollars for the services. And instead of figure out the numbers, use that as, as a guide to say, from here on, 45000 we're going to pay for this year. Forget everything in the back and paying. You keep, how can you? If I was a contractor, I couldn't come back to you and say, "Hey, I, I did all this work two years ago, and now I want paid for it." <clears throat> Why don't we just say, from this day forward, for the services rendered, we're going to pay X amount of dollars, and then we can plan that for the budget. You don't know. There's no mystery number. There's nothing. They accept the number, or, or they or they don't. Right. That, there would certainly be some merit to that because Shada certainly would know yeah. what she has to budget for. The, the, the only, so uh, the some only years we win, some years the counties win. Depends yeah, exactly. on what's going on in the construction world. But either way, it's a fair number. We're, we're taking our financial responsibilities for services that are rendered, but we're not being ridiculous and complicated. Just say 45 for the year. And I, I suspect if you went back farther than 2017 and went through the same process, you'd see that there is a figure there that's pretty, pretty fairly consistent. I you? looked at that, and like I talked to explain to the council at the last meeting, the whole point of taking the percentage of the building codes or the building permits issued is to be fair to you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually took, I went back five years <coughs> and pulled all the permits to see exactly what your percentages were. And you know, some years it was 52%, some years it was 56%. And you know, my question to the commissioners when they were looking at the verbiage on this, because they, I wanna make sure everybody understands the conversation about this interlocal agreement and the mayor can attest to this has been going on all year long. So these conversations are nothing. This is this didn't just be, this wasn't just created in the last thirty days. I mean, I emailed it to Shada originally in September before your your meeting in September for the council to review and for the commissioners to say, hey, look at this. Tell us if you have any problems. It just so happened it never it wasn't a point of discussion until your last meeting when we kind of talked about it. Um, but I didn't want it to be unfair to you. If you only, if I only issue 52% of the permits, building permits in the city, why should the county charge you for 60%? I mean, that's that's not fair to the citizens of Rochester. So that was why I asked the commissioners to come up with the percentage point of, hey, let me use this like the taxes and go retroactive the year and use the numbers from the year before to make sure it's fair. I mean, I don't want to charge you 60 grand every year when you know maybe there's a recession and I only did 30% of the permits in the city of Rochester. So I, I just wanna make sure that you understand that's why it seems a little odd, but that's the reasoning behind it, to make sure you're not being overcharged. Um, but as of right now, we don't 
we don't owe for 17 and 18. This is kind of a, if you want our services, pay 17 and 18 in 19, <clears throat> and we'll pick up and we'll, we'll keep going for you. Otherwise, we'll be out to dry, I suppose. It's just 2018. It's 2018. Not 17. 17 shouldn't have been thrown out. Mm. Yeah, shouldn't yeah. you already, right. shouldn't you already paid 18 at the beginning of 18? That's right. Wes? Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to drag this out any further than it is, but I don't understand why we're using 2017 numbers at all. It shouldn't be. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, if, you, if, if you wait till January anyway, you'll have the 2018 numbers, so that would be the base off that. And then my comment before, my question before, is that in January 2020, you would have 19 numbers, so then that would make logical sense anyway for me that you would pay 2019 at the start of 2020. Retroactive. Always paying retroactive. Yeah. So I don't under, I, I don't know why we're using 2017 numbers. I don't know if Casey has a comment for that. We split the low it funds, receipt it funds. When when did we split those? What month was it? Second quarter of 18. So it was mid-year this year? Right, Sean. So they're saying. It was um, 2017. It was late, right? Oh. So why didn't we get numbers from the start of 18 and pay for those? <laughs> because this process started not yeah. just this month. It was it started just, much earlier, so they had, that's what the baseline was 17. Was that, and that's why they're saying we owe for this whole year as well, because we started taking the seat of money before this year. We took our well, seat of money. No, 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 no. Yes, we no, took no, our no, seat no. of money. No. Our EDIT money, we, the January of 2018 was when we actually started receiving. The county received all of the EDIT funds through December 31st of 2017. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. So right. we didn't actually receive any revenue from that until 18. There's nothing, they're not asking for, this contract does not ask for anything to be paid for services rendered in 2017. You're all getting confused by that. This contract does not ask for for any payment for any services for the year 2017. It is what it is saying is that for all services rendered in the year 2018, which is when you started receiving your EDIT funds, they wanted to be paid for the services rendered. The only reason why the 2017 comes into play is because that's how we get the 60%. To know what it was. It feels like they, they want to be paid for services rendered in 2018, a period for which there's already an interlocal agreement that they agree doesn't expire until the end of the year. And it goes back to Mason's comment about you originally said, well, we haven't paid anything for 2018. I would argue we did. We paid the, the, all of our fees for the applications, <coughs> that was what they signed up for. And they didn't bring up the possibility of changing it, and they haven't announced their withdrawal from it till the end of this year. So, yeah. a couple couple thoughts. One, as written, not only is this a new interlocal agreement, it amends 2018. It, it amends the 2018 version of the agreement by asking you to pay <coughs> more than you would under the agreement. Uh, a couple stylistic things that that Shad and I were talking about. One, um, I, it refers to the Plain Commission, and I think Area Plain Commission probably is a better term contractually, um, minor point. But the other thing is, the original one was signed uh, by the councils, the county council as well. And, and I noticed when I was going through the signature pages, and I think for continuity's sake, particularly when we're dealing with two municipalities, I, I would prefer to see the county council sign off on whatever we do here, just so we have some continuity in that. But uh, uh, the rest is, I think, policy, whether, whether you decide you want to uh, amend the 2018 uh, uh, by paying once within 30 days and then paying uh, again, I'll call it prospectively in 2019 rather than retrospectively in 2019. That's, that's the way I read it. Yeah, and earlier I thought we'd already broken the said when it means we talked about this we would pay for what is owed when a new agreement and I thought we had already broken that so can we amend this one can we re rewrite it to them saying the number the formula is fair starting 
this next year? We can. Do you, what, what are your thoughts on whether the 2019 payment is made prospectively, as they suggest, based on 2018 numbers, or whether the 2019 payment is made retroactively? Based on I think from what you said, the city did not receive its EIT funds until January of this year, correct? Correct. So we, we, the city has already paid Casey's bill in 2018. No. Because we didn't get from 2017, yes. Our, our portion <coughs> that we would have received in 2017 was already paid by the county. That we would, if we if we cut, if we'd stop the agreement in 2017, yeah. then we would have gotten it. But but it, it's not. We're not really paying her in the rears. We're paying in Correct. January. We'll be paying if if right. we pay in January. Oh, we're paying for the year 2019. But the only Correct. way to formulate that is using 18 numbers to get right. it. No, I, right. No, I, I, I understand that. But since the county had full control in 2000, December 31st, 2017, they still had full control over it. They have they had already budgeted it and paid for it in 2018. Now we have our portion of EIT funds, and then so we're we would be paying for 2019. We've already essentially we've already paid that. Yeah, yeah I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying yeah, we received the funds budget. in 2018. 2018 rolled by. KC provided services. Now in 2019, we're being billed for that. And we're being billed for next year. We're, no, we're being well, billed we're, for the 2018 service because we had the lower funds at that time. Stupid. Right? Honestly, I, 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 I don't have an issue with getting a bill in January for 2018 services as long as, like Andy said, if that, if that would actually essentially be an amendment to the 18th agreement, Right. I think I think conceptually as drafted, it amends the 18 agreement because you got you got an agreement that covers 18. Mm -hmm. And, and then like I said, like I said, if we had been sorting it all out completely, mm -hmm. when we took the funds in 2018 in January, we would have broken the interlocal agreement at that point, and the clock would have started to run, the time clock, and you've got a bill then. Not right. If we'd have not come in and captured those funds, everything would have continued. If you had, so if you had given the commissioners on. notice that you were breaking an interlocal agreement, mm -hmm. then there would be no bill for 18 because you would have been enforcing your own payments. 18. We, we wouldn't have had to continue uh, on with our right. operation at all right. at that point, right? That, which is why when the commissioners came to me and said, "Should we procedurally should we break this?" You know, we're in the conversation with you know, the mayor, between the mayor and commissioners about this new agreement. Should we break the other one? And I said, well, that's up to you, but if I was speaking on the city's behalf, I'd say no. Because if you break it until you guys come to an agreement, there's, there's no enforcement at all, no matter what. Well, in Unless conver they, you know, conversations that I had with Brian was, you need to break this. We need official notification in some form. Because it was, a, I believe it was a grace period. But you need to break this because that's what it says. This will be in place until somebody, one of the parties or both, decide to break it. And I asked them not to. I asked them okay. not to break it because there was no grace period on the one that exists. There's no grace period. You could write on a napkin, we're breaking this, and hand it to the commissioners, and it's broken and then you would enforce everything. Um, I asked them not to until this was figured out and and it was actually written in here and everything was set, everybody's agreement, so that one would take the place of the other one seamlessly. So, let me ask you. Did they vote to break it if we don't take action? Yeah, it's yeah. there. Okay. Break it's January, January 1? 1? Right, that's yeah. already We've already been notified. It ends at the end of this month. But Correct. my question is, is how, what does that, and that was where my question was going, how does this, because if, if we're asking for some of these modifications, such as, uh, like Andy suggested, the um, 
on both fiscal bodies and the <coughs> executive bodies on this agreement and sign off on it. That's what the original agreement was, and this agreement should be as well. And then also if we clean up and, and maybe change the verbiage so that it says, give Casey a chance to figure what 18 figures are going <coughs> to be and fill us for that, and then we pay, and then we do that. If we make some of those, I mean, how is that going to work? Well, you could you could make you could still make the agreement effective as of January one, places Casey's office in limbo a little bit. Does, does she continue working on it um, in anticipation of that, or does she not? And she may have to say, "Look, I have to take a hiatus from enforcing Rochester's uh, uh, codes," and that would be that would be understandable. I mean, can you enforce your own codes? Yes. Can you enforce codes through? Uh, ordinance violation citations or other things without Casey's office for a time. I don't, I don't relish the thought of that for any length of time. Um, but I, I, just because you don't have it signed on January 1 doesn't mean you can't sign it you know, on January 12th. So we could, hope we could hold like a special meeting the first part of January, give the commissioners and the county council, I don't know when they meet. I know commissioners met last night, didn't they? They met last night, but the county council met on the 11th. And I'm not sure if a lot of times they'll have an end of the year meeting on the last day. I think they do. They only try on the radio. Here's the bottom line, folks. For six, seven years now, the county's been using these seeded funds to fund Casey's office as well as some other offices. Uh, we don't want to put them in any more financial bind than they're in right now. So we need to work something out to make this seamless so that Casey continues to operate. Um, we've been paying for it until we captured those funds. So I, I think we should, my opinion is we should move forward and sign, sign up for the agreement. We're certainly not going to be in any worse position than we were before we had control of our seated funds. Would you think about negotiating that January 2019 payment, though, for 2019 to see about doing that at six months and six months instead of the upfront payment for all of 2019 to make it a little easier for our budget? I get that you for this for first year, go January, July, January, and then we'll be on a January. Yeah, give it a no, chance to so get that budget going. That. Pay what you owe for 18 in the <coughs> but for 19, <coughs> six months into it, say, okay, here's our number. Mm -hmm. We owe you this. Pay it. December, here's your numbers again. We'll pay you in January, and then you know you, you know where you're budgeting. Do you think they would be open to something like that, Casey? Quite frankly, I think they would. <laughs> it's either they get. I don't know. Tell us <laughs> I mean, you're not yeah, saying no. If we, if we but agree it's not your decision. We it's not my decision. Yeah, I, I get it. I can explain the agreement, but then we come around I can't explain what they're thinking. June or July and say, we've been running on this 44 number, and we come around in June or July and say, look, for sure, well, you know, we can do 22 in June or July. <laughs> January we'll do, or next December, 22, and then we can set something up, like you say, for, and that's what I said earlier, is to try to get this the next year so we're not log jam so to speak with funds i think once we get if i think it has by them very happily if we get this 18 uh, i think they'll be able to take a deep breath and then we say okay this is you know then spaced out six months for each other and then we can schedule things in our budget to to catch up with things and and get us off kilter a little bit. we can take care of this we can do it all right there's a way but just to make things a little smoother yeah i if if they would be agreeable to, if we can get some of the verbiage corrected here and, and, and set this so that it and says that Casey will give us by January 20th or something the actual numbers for 2018 and then we get that paid out in our next pay cycle. Um, if we, if they would, uh, or we pay half we can we give them forty thousand in January and then get the final numbers and make the next payment then in June. Mm -hmm. But if they would be agreeable 
to that and then changing. I, I, I'm with Andy. I'm, I'm kind of a, a stickler when it comes to when you enter into an agreement between municipalities, I really think both councils and both executive branches, <coughs> which would be the commissioners, county council, common council, and the mayor, I think all four bodies need to be on the agreement. That's what our original agreement was, was with all four bodies. This one is not. And, and I think between municipalities, I think you need to have transparency, and I think you need to have everybody understanding what's going on. And in the process of this, if, if the council agrees to, and I can call Christina and say, hey, can you just send me a quick invoice for 40,000? I can get you a check out in January until we get a final um, verbiage cleanup on this and get it signed by the end of January, and then we can cut out because like I said, either way I go, I'm going to have to do an additional appropriation. And whether we split the cost between the council budget and seed it, or however you guys want to do that. I just recommend we not take it all out of seed it. Give us some breathing room so that we can build some of that seed it money up so that we have some for future development within the city. Um, because right now, if we don't do that, we're not going to have, if, if we're not going to have any built, or we're not going to have any cash balances there to be able to work with. So I like John doing what you're saying. If they're agreeable to that, and like I said, we're, we're will, I'm willing to pay it. I can give it to them in January. Just I think we need to clean the agreement up a little bit. One thing I, I think, and I'm not that I'm disputing the fact that county council should be, have a signature sheet. They can, they can't. The one thing that's different between the commissioners and the council versus this council is that the county council is a fiscal body only. Correct. They are only a fiscal body. The commissioners are the legislative body whereas you do both. So any contract goes through you in the county, all contracts the commissioners are in charge of. The county council does the fiscal side of it. Originally, when we originally did this way back when, I asked the council to sign it because there was the clause in there you weren't paying anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I went to the county council at that time and I said, are you okay with this? Because I'm taking on this extra work and we're doing these different things and are you okay with that? You know, you're getting the edit funds, you're getting tax dollars, you know, there's all these reasons why. And, um, and I asked them to put the signature sheet on so everyone was comfortable with the fact that it, it stated that. I'm, I'm not in disagreement. I mean, I know yeah, the council, the county council, here. but it's not, um, it's different. <laughs> I get it. I'm just saying that this isn't invalidated well, it's, because it's, the county council is being handled it. differently. I, I have, as you know, I have an issue with you being the one who's sitting here right now. And I know Commissioner Lewis had, a, had another issue tonight, but uh, six months ago, if we had one of the commissioners here going through this process, it might be a lot clearer. Uh, that's not your job. You report to the Area Planning Commission. That had not had an issue with that. And like I said, I, I can't speak for the county commissioners or the county council. I can't no, speak. you can't. And that's, right. that is, but you're here tonight actually kind of so I'm doing that. Yeah. 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 And, I, and, I, and Commissioner Lewis called me. He had an issue tonight. So. He did. But um, we've had a lot of meetings over the last year. Mm -hmm. And I said, and if, if, you, if you guys are comfortable with it, and, and that, that is, like I said, it's just me. Um, you know, I, I think transparency is important, and there's, it's just the way we operate. Well, I, I, I think, folks, I would like to ask tonight that we make an agreement to do something to support the situation. It doesn't behoove us to put the county in a financial bind over this issue. That, that hurts all of us. Um, Mr. Mayor, first, I need to withdraw my motion. Okay. <laughs> and what was <laughs> <laughs> well, that? A half hour later. Yeah. He, he yeah. To approve the I officially need to withdraw my motion. Well, we just we just talked about a special meeting. We just talked about a special meeting. I can we get this cleaned up and have a special meeting to nail this down between now and the end of the year. Where were you spending Christmas? Did you have any plans? No, right here. Fine. Yeah. No, He's but I mean, is lunch, that possible right? for a, like a lunch meeting or something? <laughs> Andy, can you get us cleaned up? And if I know exactly what changes I'm looking to make, it sounds like <laughs> it, it sounds like the council is 
listening to your clerk treasurer and saying we would like more time to pay the 2018 number. Now, if you're not ruling out, but you want more time to pay the 2018 number, uh, whether we base, it seems like if we're doing that, we could base both those on the full 2018 figures. Mm -hmm. So something along the lines of whatever that number is, instead of, you're gonna pay essentially that number twice. Uh, once by January 31st and like once by, uh, you know, July 1 mm -hmm. or something like that. Is that, that's the sense that I'm getting, is that something like that would make it more palatable. Um, and then uh, um, that seems uh, uh, a pretty easy modification to make. And if, if we redraft it and we want to include a signature page for the town council, you can sign it like that and send it back to them. That's not, that's not going to take very long to change. I just want to make sure I don't, you know, I, I'm not misreading. That seems to be the way, you're gem the way you want to see it. Would it, and again, Casey, I'm putting you on the spot to uh, give your opinion, anyhow, you may get countermanded on this, but uh, would it make sense for the two lawyers to get their heads together? <coughs> you and Greg. We could. I don't, th I don't think we have time for the end of it. Yeah. What is, I mean, Greg what is, is Greg trying to get everything right? cleaned up to move into the judge's position, and he is swamped. Okay. I mean, I'll, I don't mind saying that for Greg because I think he'll he would <laughs> appreciate it, but he is absolutely swamped right now trying to make sure that he has all his files either moved to where they need to go. I have a, I'll, I'll be here a half day tomorrow and then Thursday, and then I'm out. So anything else I gotta do is remote. Well, that's okay. Yeah, Kim, you can you can do a um, can we do a, could you draft just kind of a preliminary, a, just a, an agreement to, we are going to agree to with these changes, um, and that we'll agree to submit 40,000 towards the agreement in January. A flat number. A flat number okay. until, and then that gives Casey time to put 2018 numbers together to so get us the final. Replace the 2018 provision with a flat $40,000, leave the, how, how the 2019 is calculated 2018 number, leave all that in place. Yeah, okay. I, I think, yeah, I think, and then that, then that we would actually have 2018 numbers, and then I can pay the remaining balance I could even pay it by the end of the first quarter. You know, I mean, I, I you're well, talking you, about changing the agreement to where it's not being paid. Because what they want to be paid is what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, how you read this. Mm -hmm. They want to be paid for the sum, of, like in January, yeah. for that year's operating budget. But you're changing that to be, well, you have to work all year 2018, enforce our codes, and we'll pay you in January. This one time. No, this no, because if you start it that way, that's the way it'll always be. Because you're starting it rolling on more of a, if you hire me to paint your room, I paint it, I give you an invoice, and then you pay me. Yeah. But like with Fedco, with their budget, they want to be paid in January for monies that will be used in their budget for that year. So I just want to I make see what you're saying. I just want I, to make sure you understand. I no, I don't. Okay, I see what you're saying. So if we pay it all in January, and, and I don't have a problem paying it all in January. That's that's not. It's more. I want to make sure that the numbers we're using. I would rather have the 2018 numbers accurate and not a 2017 example. To pay from right but if you do that you're changing the agreement to where it's not in their eyes in, in the way that this was set up it's changing it to where you're paying for services rendered after they've been the services have, have been rendered for 12 months then you pay it yeah. That's what you're paying. It's retro, eh? It's, it's retro you're paying. It's just exactly what West pointed out. Yeah. But like with the Fedco contract, it's a contract West. in January oh, that sorry. says pay X amount of dollars <coughs> in January pay or every seven. six months or whatever because the operating budget of that year, that money, those monies are being used for that in that year. They they have a cash flow issue. I mean, you're using the numbers. So you pay Fedco monthly or yearly? They're asking for it to reimburse for 2018 also to fund your office for 2019. Right. Our, our portion of it would fund your office, and they would fund your office for their portion. 
the concern is cash flow. Right. So why didn't they bring that to us at the start of January of 2018 to pay for 18 then? How long have you been talking about? Because we were in the works. That's it's been, been in the works it's been for a long time. time. But since, just happened yesterday. But no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but since 17, it's been talked about. But the EDIT funds is what kicked it all off. Yep. And the, with the EDIT fund discussion, that's what kicked it all off. And I don't think a lot of people even understood how much how many of these interlocal agreements and services are being paid for out of that? And that's where the discussion came from. So it couldn't have happened in 2017. Because it was, the conversation wasn't there yet. Yeah, no, no, we hadn't stepped up and taken it. Right. So do you have, just a little a different question, do you have an extra um, staff or someone because of the city? So say the city, um, got a little excited and put someone in place January 1st and um, we no longer had the agreement, would someone then lose a position in the county or you just handle it with or without the city workload? When in 2008, when we went to the area, um, we actually hired a part-time inspector. That was the only staff change. And that was to handle the additional inspections for the zone because we didn't do the city bill. And then at the end, I think it was September 2008, the city asked us to enforce their building codes and they're unsafe. And there's been no staff changes since then. I mean, we didn't hire anybody new for that. And then in 13, the side, I think it was 13, 12 or 13, the sidewalks came into play. So we've never hired any additional staff separate to take on that. Yeah. yeah, we hired an additional inspector to help with the zoning when when we got all, everybody went together under the same umbrella for the area. Several years ago. In 2008. Mm -hmm. But since you've taken over, took an, everything over, you haven't, you've been just adding to your workload without hiring. Correct. Okay. We've become more efficient. Thanks. Okay. Casey. <laughs> well, I'm just sitting here trying to think. It's like, I have a headache. I do have a headache. Um, okay, so it would, do you think, in your opinion, and I know you can't speak for him, but what if, if we were to do that by the January 31st, if we could do this, that, that they have calculated here, or you have calculated, I should say, not them, um, and then if by March 31st we could do the 2019 based on your 2018 numbers. Because by then I should have a better hand, a, a better a figure on where our year is going since we don't have it budgeted. And then I'll be able to know what direction I need to pull from, whether I've got it, how much I've got to pull from general, from the council budget, and how much I can pull from CEDIT. And then come the next January, then we would be on track for the numbers, the bill we get in, the, in January 2020 then would be for, um, based on 19 numbers, but for the, 2020 year. You know, I would, yeah. I can't speak for the commissioners. But I would hope that a letter from the county council and from the executive branch, the mayor, stating these are our intentions. We do not want the interlocal broken. We understand right. the value, you know, we understand the value of it. You know, we want to have this interlocal cooperation, you know, for this first year because it has been at the end of the year for these stated reasons. Yeah. This is what we would like to do. I would hope that they would. I mean, we're still paying our fair share. Right. 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 Just would, not all. I would hope they'd be okay. Would that leave the council if I can? That gives me time to look at the numbers and, and make, like I said, I just need is, an opportunity. Yeah, it does. Is March 31st long enough or I mean, I, July 1? Selfishly, I prefer July 1, That's, but I also, on the other hand, I, I, I'm with Ted on this and I'm with, with everybody on this is that we did say if we break this, we're going to pay our fair share. And I don't want to jeopard. I don't want to jeopardize Casey's office because she does. She's. In, I will say she's invaluable to me because there's many times I get phone calls and emails. And I'm like, yeah, that's not me. That's Casey. <laughs> um, so I. I don't want to put them in line because it I, because I know we it, because I uh, we can do it. I just need time. She, she'd still be getting a full what we would normally pay for a full yes. year's budget at the end of the year. So it shouldn't affect your actual budget for the year. It would really just affect the county's cash flow. Right. So yeah, they can work it with us a little bit. Yeah. So it, it doesn't I think it's move, fair. It doesn't behoove yeah. the county to uh, cut this off. 
say, okay, you guys do your own thing. There's 50 grand that uh, is going to support that office, and it doesn't behoove us to walk away and try and do it for 50k. Um, we could, we could absorb it and do it, but it, the learning curve mm -hmm. would be tough, mm -hmm. almost, and, and it wouldn't be seamless. I can tell you. Yeah. And, and I and I will apologize to Ted and I both were gone at the last meeting. I was home, <laughs> not well at all, <laughs> with the rest of my family. Um, and unfortunately, Ted was out for medical reasons as well. So we should have had, we could have had this conversation last month, but unfortunately for us, um, we had <laughs> both Ted and I. So I, I if if we can, if Andy can draft something to that effect and give them at least something. Uh, that we're agreeable to this. This is how, if, if they're agreeable to it, then I'm okay with it. I'll make it work. So we're we still looking at a special meeting to get this. <coughs> does it does it make? I, I think it would make more sense. Make the changes as you want to see them because they don't sound all that unworkable. Mm -hmm. Have your special meeting, execute it, and then send it to the county. Okay. Rather than draft a letter what you want, send it to the county. Let let your version of the contract convey what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that probably is likely to end up with a faster resolution, batting okay. your suggestions back and forth. Okay. Do you um, have that done by tomorrow? <laughs> so we do you? Thursday. 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 We have special meeting Thursday. Do a Thursday what meeting maybe? Lunch. Yeah. 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 Listen, could we make it 4.30 meeting? On Thursday? On Thursday. Awesome. Yep, that no. works. So. Well, not unless you make it quick. We have a Board of Works meeting. Yeah, that's true. At 5. Yeah, we can let the Board of Works wait. I mean, if we're all in agreement, though, it's, it's not going to take you know, It's, it's going to take 10 minutes. 10 yeah. minutes. Sign. Yeah. Let's no, do, no way we have to keep it short. Let's do 4.30. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Wes, here's my notice. <laughs> we're having a meeting <laughs> Thursday at 4.30. <laughs> You're invited. You're invited. Thanks. Thank you. And, and you know it's a pretty good idea. We're going to call it the West Agreement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 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 Well, as long as we have a point of understanding, certainly. I don't know. <coughs> that's good. We, we will have a quorum. We, but we will have a quorum. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, Next thing on the agenda was the uh, sidewalk program agreement, and uh, I got I've got some more information to pass out, folks, on the 50/50 sidewalk program that we're planning on implementing after the first year. That that that's the initial uh, layout of how the agreement would work, and then there's an application form that the individual would uh, be asked to come in, fill out, do a little uh, work of their own on what they would like to have done in front or side of their house. We would go down, verify it all, and then get two contractors to give us a bid. Uh, we'd go back to the property owner then and let them know what their half of the low bid would be and get the agreement and uh, the, the money's up front then to start the program. Uh, and as remember, we were going to uh, take some monies out of the capital fund. Uh, uh, also, uh, I don't know how much you've been uh, keeping apprised in the newspaper and such about uh, a grant, an NDOT grant that we are reaching out to, we've applied for uh, to capture some money for a project to start in 2023, uh, replacing sidewalks. It's a continuation of the Safe Routes to School sidewalk program. And actually, uh, an engineering firm with a fellow you know, uh, Rex uh, 
Dylan Dillinger is now associated with yes, right, uh, <coughs> a young fellow in who's been expert in helping uh, communities our size get grants <coughs> of this nature from NDOT and he believes we have a very good shot at an 80-20 grant. Again, for a, a 2023 program, uh, we filled out all the, uh, the paperwork and the application and designated the area uh, we were looking at. Um, the, uh, uh, the project uh, focuses on high pedestrian corridors around the downtown, uh, the elementary schools, the library, and the new nickel plate trail area. The goal of the project is to connect neighborhoods from around downtown to businesses, uh, city hall, schools, and uh, the nickel plate trail. Uh, and our application says we believe this will increase the business activity downtown, make children safer going to school, uh, increase the physical activity of walking through the community and such. And we picked uh, uh, areas, uh, an area on uh, the east side of Rochester and also an area on the west side connected closely related to the schools. It is for uh, the uh, building, replacing of sidewalks, decrepit areas. Uh, it's, it's like I said, it's an 80-20 project. The total uh, uh, is grant would be $935,000 total project. So with that kind of uh, emphasis, uh, we can do a lot of work towards our 30-year ADA plan. <laughs> There'll be more as we go on on that, but like I said, they were very, very certain that with everything we've had and all the work that I gotta say, SHOT has done in the past relative to the safe routes to school and such, we've got a leg up on having everything we need to. Well, that was so we, had, we had a safe routes to schools committee, which included Terry, uh, myself, Casey, um, I was on Chase. Chase okay. was on there. Betsy Hines. From Betsy Hines and, and Scott, Scott Kessler. 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 Well, it was all good preliminary work. Now the program has changed. And yeah. I guess you would say for the better, wouldn't you? I think so. I think the state, in, in the way that they've looked at I, the impact that trails and connectivity, that live, work, play concept has really kind of taken over the economic growth for the state. Uh, the, they've holistically looked at all of that, so they've combined it, and I think also for ease of processing for grants, uh, they've kind of moved those types of projects over into one bucket, so it makes it easier for the state to, to administer. Well, again, our walking around Rochester in the, in the, the uh, summer months and such with the, the mayor's walks, our sidewalks suck. <laughs> we, we've got a lot of sidewalk issues. And like I said, if we don't grab hold of it here pretty quick and get started, we're never going to make any progress on it. And we've got a plan to be ADA uh, compliant in 30 years, and that time paper just keeps going, you know, keeps, keeps getting shorter and shorter. So we need to make a real conscious effort to, to, to do something. There. And, and we owe it to the constituents of Rochester, too. Uh, you know, out of sight, out of mind. We, we need to get into that, so we're heading in that direction. Okay. Yes, we have a start date. You have in mind for 5050. Right after the first of the year. We'll start taking. When, when the weather is appropriate, around February, but we'll start taking requests right after the first of the year. So we need to have this ready to roll for application review January yep. 15th. I, I need a date. January 15th. Thank you. With, uh, you know, with the intent that when the weather breaks, we'll be looking at March, April, -ish, somewhere around there for actual getting in and doing the construction. And this is um, contingent upon funding as well? Correct, correct. And that's why we go through for, for Board of Works approval. Everything will be, Board of Works will operate much as the tree board operates with the, the tree program. Is the area that was highlighted in the uh, project, the 2023 grant, is that going to be 
given first consideration by Board of Works now, or is it, <coughs> does that matter of well, all town? Yeah, all of that will be taken into consideration. Um, I, I, if, if, if somebody in that area wants to pay for their own sidewalk in front of their house, though now, that's something that I think we would definitely entertain, just to, just to get the sidewalk I just, improved. You know? Anticipating a question from somebody, so yeah, just trying to make sure. Yeah, uh, I certainly wouldn't, uh, if somebody's anticipating getting their sidewalk replaced, I wouldn't take a chance of waiting on the, the grant. Uh, we may not get it. It may not come in. Right. So, and, and could it also be a, uh, a property that doesn't have sidewalk currently? Uh, the 50-50 program could, could, be. could be. Yeah. I don't think the grant no, allows that. No, the grant was not. We did not uh, look at properties that did not have existing sidewalk for the grant. So this one, look at, I mean, yeah. all of that East 12th Street uh, from the railroad yeah. to Walt Bank. By new uh, construction, meaning yeah, our, 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 our form says that, that new construction would not be considered. That is new construction involving a new new facility, a new building. In other words, uh, we're not going to entertain doing 50 50 for a new bank that's going up and has to put the sidewalks in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, we'd have to have Casey administering that for us. <laughs> yeah, because I might be looking sidewalks are for Well, now. I love sidewalks. Very, very <laughs> yeah. asking yeah. 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 You say yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You got all this sidewalk experience. Okay. New business. Oh, our FedCo agreement. Good luck. <laughs> Good to see y'all tonight. You got hecklers in the crowd. Yeah. Chase Greg Sweater. Thank you. Um, I presented the uh, sort of revised agreement uh, contract for 12 months um, to you guys late last week. I think you've had it uh, since maybe just Friday. Um, our budget um, for 2018 and 19 is at 238000 We um, get about twenty to 25000 from other sources other than um, seated. Um, so we ask, um, have asked for $215,052 um, from seated for 2019. 107.526 uh, to come um, each from the county and the city was the operating agreement for 2018. We're asking for the same for 2019. Um, appeared before the commissioners last night and they um, <clears throat> said they have appropriated around 60,000, like 58,000 or so um, for uh, 2019 for the economic development effort. Um, uh, the final conclusion last night of the commissioners is that they had signed a six month agreement for 53,763, which is half of what we were asking for the county. Um, the signals I got on um, the entirety of the remainder of the year was to, uh, we don't know exactly what seated appropriation is gonna look like for 2019. We're not sure where we are with the city on a couple of things. So continue business as usual on behalf of the county and then come back to us in the April, May timeframe and see what might be done for the remainder of the year. So I don't know what the plan second half of the year. Um, right now we have a six month agreement with the county at half of our request of 53. So the agreement that you guys um, have, um, should have uh, is, for, is for 107 for 12 months. Uh, I know that that may uh, be asking uh, to put you in a position where you're making an agreement for 12 months and you don't know what the second six months is gonna look like. Um, so I'll just open it for discussion on Concerns that you have or ideas that you have for the agreement for, for 19? Well, and I talked to Commissioner Lewis, as I mentioned earlier, and we talked about last night's meeting and the, uh, the decision to uh, cut uh, 
their contribution to your budget. Um, again, it's all about the money. Uh, he tells me that the 53,763 is what they have left of, for, for EDIT funds to go towards that. But the EDIT funds have been distributed elsewhere. The county was uh, charged with cutting uh, 3.9 million dollars from their budget by the state. So money is an issue. They're, 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 they're trying to find it for whatever they can to keep, uh, keep everything intact the way it has been. Uh, so, as I believe, a quote from Bill Olinger, we bled sweat and tears trying to find uh, how to balance that budget. And part of it is to cut their, uh, their contribution to uh, FEDCO. Uh, I don't know how optimistic you are about a June time frame and there being more monies to throw at it. Uh, uh, what? Uh, I'm an optimist. My question, I can't tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, what What would this mean, just off the top of your head, to your organization, Jerry? I mean, we can look at things like the uh, Regional Plan Council. Uh, economic Development Partnership. Um, and we had an additional ten thousand dollars in the budget for something along the lines of like we did with that pitch competition this fall, you know, scheduled. So I mean, we can look at the budget and, and see what we can slash out of it. Um, but you know, I mean, when I started um, eight years ago, our budget was one seventy three, uh, and we've added some programs and we've added some. Capacity, and we've added some things. So I mean, we could go. We could always go backwards. You know, we could always go backwards with our economic development effort. Um, I guess is the only um, answer I have for that. Um, you know, I, I, it's a it's a tough line to say. Will I just work in the city, or I just work in the county, um, or I'm just going to work in the county for six months, but the city for twelve months? Of what is you know most people think of Dean Foods as being in the city, you know, but it's not. And we have a lot of factories that are near the city of Rochester, but aren't in the city of Rochester. So um, you know, I don't know what that that border line looks like. Um, you know, do I not talk to Acumen anymore, or Airbag anymore, or Ramco anymore, or Sunoco anymore, or you know, those kind of those kind of decisions? what I suppose have to be made. Um, well, it also affects, uh, I would guess, uh, Fulton, Kiwana, and Akron. We did a lot of work in Kiwana a few years ago, and projects from time to time in Akron, including 2018. So, you know, it was one of the recommendations from the counties that we go to Akron and Kiwana and Fulton and ask for a portion of their seated funds uh, for the economic development effort uh, doesn't amount to a lot, especially compared to the county portion of, of seated. Um, I think that you know if, if the county's struggling for uh, money, then I'm not sure that you know those towns are necessarily any better off. last year also to try and get it down to a smaller number uh, and we looked for other funding outside the seated funds we were closer to 10 or 12 from outside the seated we found another eight or ten thousand dollars to supplement with our operations from other sources <coughs> There's no doubt about it. It's there's 92 counties in the state of Indiana, and I don't think any one of them doesn't have an economic development. President, I 
wrong with that? There's I don't no know county any, that I don't know of any that don't. I after you and I talked about that yesterday, I went to the state site and there's ninety two economic development organizations listed on their website. And you know, there's no plan on the table for economic development if you know we choose not to fund fund them. <coughs> there's a strategic plan from two thousand um, that actually um, you know, proposes a budget of the operation plus another $95,000 for work and economic development. I've never had access to that additional $95,000, but those were things like specific marketing plans, um, public relations plans, uh, travel plans uh, for uh, attraction projects. So as you know, 18 years ago, there was a plan put together that said, you know, for the organization to be effective, it, it should be funded at an even higher level than it, than it currently is. So, so there's a plan um, we've been following, um, but it, it is even at the current level, it's tough to reach everything we want to do. So what was this amount last year then for our agreement? It's the same. It's the same. Okay. It's, it's same amount. Okay. Both, both county and city were going to put that amount in from their seeded funds. Uh, and again, it went back to uh, we captured our control of our seeded funds in the state of the uh, not legal bag. Uh, when the county had all of our seeded funds, they funded federal lawyer plan, and when we captured those back, that's when we said we you know, pay our fair share. And this was one of the agreements that came out of that. We did this last year, but hundred percent to pay for us to pay this. That's this is our half. That's our half. That's our half. Yeah. And now the, the county oh, is yeah, yeah. the yeah, county is cutting. Yeah. The county is cutting theirs. County is cutting. Are they necessarily yeah. cutting it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was my concern. Yeah. I didn't know right. the county was still paying, and if we're going to have to how that was going to work. If you need that much and the county's not going to be able to then continue to support the county. The county's comfortable agreeing to six months, 50, right. 53,000 with the no guarantee, one way or the other. With an invitation to come back in the you know April May time frame and and see where things are to ask for the second half of the year, basically. Okay. <clears throat> but with no promise that it would be there. Well, I'm talking to Commissioner Lewis today. That basket of seeded money has been allocated. It's <coughs> unless they have, uh, well, so unless they have about forty thousand that comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Eighty in the yeah. eighty in the boom boom. And I believe that was mentioned to you last yeah. night. Wasn't it? Was so Terry, what happens in six months if the county feels that they don't <coughs> have the money or want to give you the other half? Yeah. Uh, good question. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. Honestly, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Unless there's another funding source that's found, or something's taken out of the budget. And that's my point. If we if we put in our half, that that buys time to cut the budget where we can. You know, things we probably wouldn't. We'd rather not pull out of it, but we could pull out and maybe find another funding source. Well, and that makes the city uh, two thirds of uh, the contributor to the Fedco budget. That's uh, that's a major, major source of your income. Um, I think uh, I agree with you. I think we definitely need to keep things going, but I think we need to be a little proactive. And I'd like to uh, have uh, Councilman Garrett, you, and Councilman Smith all been around a long time with the economic development world sit down with Shana and me and kick some things around as to uh, thoughts for future economic development can put a clause in and redevelop it or that it's it's something we've got to have we can't have a situation where there's no well, presence and if you're not growing the economic development you're, you're gonna die I mean yeah. You know, so that's the county needs money, they're just going to keep taxing the same people and eventually they move away. So you got to keep growing the, you know, you got to keep developing. Yeah, I 
think using the example in business, when the times get tough, you don't fire your marketing department. <laughs> that's, that's probably the last thing that'll go. Yeah. You need to <clears throat> generating revenue. Get new <clears throat> What do, you, what do you think of the uh, $107,000 commitment? I think if, we should do that. If we commit and the county doesn't follow through, we are still going to get a service. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so the door's closed. Okay. And we don't know. That's what I was asking. Yeah, you'll be, you know, Tina, so you have a question? If the county doesn't fund their second six months and do another contract, then are they off of the Bedco board at that point? Didn't they get some seats in this agreement for and the executive passing? board? The yeah. executive board, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Do they still get a say then in how things are run then if they're not contributing for that second half? Or uh, that's something I've Or does that with change the, the agreement? <clears throat> a lot of TBD. But that, I, I don't think we could sit down soon enough and talk about it, uh, folks, and then advise the council. Uh, the six months gonna go by pretty quickly. Yeah. Chairman, can you clarify for me? Is the agreement, you have two different figures. I just need to know which one is actually, I, I think it's the 107, 526, 92, not the 96. I'm sorry, Shadow, the 107 Yeah, on the second page of the agreement, you have two different figures. You have uh, a fixed sum of 107 526 Oh, I see. And then 96 the 107. I just need to know which one is. I, I starred the 92 because I think that was the You lost four agreement. cents. Let's give them the four cents. <laughs> 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 Does that help? <laughs> 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 now we got to show the expenditures, right? State Board of Accounts looks for that. You're gonna, 92 is great. Okay. You're going to start counting those pennies. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I'm sorry. I, we just have to for, forgive me. It was pointed out to me, so I thought I would add. <laughs> so we'll go with the 92. <laughs> for Terry. <laughs> okay. okay, so Ted, you suggested John, Brian. And Marty? Would you guys be willing to sit down at uh, a luncheon or something and just kick around? <coughs> <coughs> I like it yeah. all these lunches all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you've been, you've been down this road yeah, for a long time. <laughs> as well as you, Marty. Yeah. Uh, I, I it, it, would you entertain know? some action on uh, Terry's request? What do you think? Sign on for the 107 figure. I second that. Motion by uh, Councilman Goodman and seconded by Councilman Thompson. Just a question. Just a sure. good question. question. I was waiting for the motion. So, if worst case scenario is the county does not re up for the second six months. Do we let Terry have fifty-three thousand well, dollars to hit the point? What is the? No. <laughs> I, I don't see anything in here about uh, the severability of. You disperse this monthly contract. Right, uh, it is yes, dispersed it is monthly, monthly, but it's a twelve-month agreement. Mm -hmm. But if the entity ceases to exist, I would think that would absolve us of the agreement. But the entity you're, you're right. doesn't cease to exist yeah. if we are funding it by one hundred and seven thousand. That's the point. He could still work mm -hmm. for the city of Rochester. Yeah. It doesn't, you're, you're absolutely right. It doesn't hurt to have a <coughs> footnote in there or some line in there that says this agreement is, you know, intact unless the organization would pay. Yeah, I, I hear what you're yeah, saying. Sure. Well, I don't know that it fails. <laughs> it, it's the point is, do we? If the county does not refund, re up, do we continue to fund Petco for uh, economic make, yeah, make development up right. in uh -huh. Rochester only or the 
the other six months of 2019. I think that's what he was getting at with our discussion. Yeah, but I, I see what you're well, saying. Signing the agreement as it is today. Yeah, today. Yeah. It's a 12-month yeah. agreement. Get yourself in trouble. If you sign it today, then it goes to that's a year's agreement. You see what we're, we're talking mm -hmm. about, Andy? Mm -hmm. That we need something. A we need need an escape, at six months? You need an escape clause or, or I'm glad you brought that up, Mark, because I was having a hard time um, to vote for that. I respect Terry and and um, and what he does. I just the what ifs and like Derek raised the question is concerning, and so it, I hate just to run for a yes vote. And I'm glad you brought that up, though. Well, I, I certainly don't want to see it fail. I agree 100 percent about <coughs> Terry and the work he does. So, so how would you? that we state that that uh, if FedCo would uh, I, I would say we just uh, need an opt out a opportunity at the end of six months if if we so choose if six, if six months is, a, is, is your hard hard dividing line what you could say is that in the event the county has not committed to fund the latter half of 2018 then uh, either party may uh, 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 rescind the remaining required payments upon 30 days notice or upon 20 days notice. Would, wouldn't the easy thing to, to cover mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. be for us to make the same agreement the county That's exactly made? what I was saying. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. And then but we do that, does that, well, I guess if we pay monthly, it doesn't matter. So if we don't pay. We pay monthly. So then if you, if you look at something like that, then I make this point. If you give an, an organization no future to look forward to, are you going to get 100%? I mean, if, if you, you have two employees, are they going to wait around for six months or are they going to start looking for other opportunities? And are we going to get 100% out of the organization? I understand the caution and, you know, we need to, we need to do something, but I'm looking at this as though it's going to work. We're going to make it work. And you know we need we need to make a decision, and I you know I can't worry about every little minor hiccup that's going to hit. I'm not saying we ignore, you know. I mean, I, 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 I live in the real world. I understand that, but you understand what I'm saying. If we we, we have that axe hanging over their head the whole time for <coughs> six months, are we going to get the service that we're expecting of it? Yeah, I I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. That's certainly valid. Right. If we if we signed up with 107,000, the uh, organization isn't there in six months. Right. I have no problem with uh, protecting our our investment and you know having an uh, you know, maybe we reevaluate every three months, six months, you know, which is fine. But you know, I, I think we need to. Uh, we certainly have this commitment. But you're committing to them as a city's portion of it. But if the county doesn't, the second half. Is the contract over between city and county then? Will they be able to uh, continue? That's the thing. That's the reevaluation. You know, we look at the organization. Okay, now you don't have that fifty thousand. What are we doing? You know, I have full faith that knowing what we what we know now, we're going to go back and look at the budget and see. We have to plan as though that fifty is not going to be there right. to keep the organization going. Yes. You know, we can't right. just cross our fingers and hope something's going to happen. So where we would have to, I would see Fedco looking at that and you know, I can say we because you know two of us sit on the executive board, um, look at the budget and just assume that 50 is not gonna be there. If it is there, great. You know, then I think we can move forward with it. Would you all feel better with a, uh, a clause? A Evaluation, yeah, a fail or a, uh, a six month evaluation to the business if the business fails and the commitment is is done. I mean, your, your, your other 50 some thousand dollars, there's not a payoff for that to the group. It is a, it is a contractor, you know, but go is a contractor, so your point's well taken. But if we know we're getting the 50 some thousand. 
that reassurance or that optimism, are you saying that even if it's not there, we can come up with it? And no, no, we I'm can not say no. we no. cover the, what the oh, shortfall no, no, is. No, okay. No, no, no. I thought you were talking about our part. Our, our, our part. Without, without speaking out of turn for the executive committee, are, are you able to at least say you're working on a budget that would not include that second six month of finance? Just got the news last night. So, oh, okay. You know, the, the All right. So, yeah. The executive yeah, committee yeah. not met and you okay. know, discussed this. Well, yeah, we need Thursday. certainly the tenor is different around this table that I, I would think you, you know, there's every intent to fully fund the uh, agreement from this body, I would, I would think. Our, our intents to make it work, to help you make it work. So, I expect this is but as a steward of, of city funds, I, I don't know that we should do it as it is written. Right. So what kind of evaluation point are we comfortable with? What do we think makes sense? You want to do, you want to do seven months? Because then we'll know for sure if the county's in. You know, I, I'm willing to amend my motion. Oh. What's that, Mason? Yeah, I think they made this a six-month agreement just to have leverage on on the other office, and once we agree to that, then I think they'll re-up. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, they're, they're having. I, mean, I, I, I know things are. I, I know things are tight for them. I, I get that. But I, I think part of it is, is leverage on this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I have to <coughs> rely on Andy's expertise to know if Fedco goes, if, if, if Terry chooses to leave or, or uh -huh. and Fedco really ceases to be an effective entity. Well, ceasing to be an effective entity and ceasing to exist are two different things. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can stop operations and not have anyone come into the office. If you haven't dissolved that entity with the Secretary of State, this contract is an accounts receivable. It's an asset of that organization. And if we sign as is, so whatever we haven't paid is $107,000, they're entitled to <coughs> those funds. Even if you're going through bankruptcy court, the trustee looks at it and says, you know, that's an asset of the business. But so, so that's why I was Yeah. I mean if, if, <coughs> if you some kind of if you want, if you want some some uh, protection on there, I, I think where I'm curious about is do you want it uh, uh, to simply say we'll reevaluate it in six months? And if so, what if that reevaluation is Fed Co saying? No, we don't want to sign anything different. I mean, you can't, you can't have an effective agreement to agree. No. Um, and so either we put a metric in there that says, um, uh, in the event X happens, this agreement is void, or parts of it are void. Or we say, uh, uh, we're going to change this agreement, and this is for six months. And we're going to have this amount. Well, we have a motion. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, would you care to withdraw the motion? Yeah, I will withdraw the motion. Do we have a new motion? I will withdraw the second. Okay. Do we have a new motion on the floor? <laughs> you looking at me? Yes, I am. <laughs> Can we just say what he said? Yeah. <laughs> What he said. It sounds like the choices. There's two choices. As I see it, there's either the choice to accept the contract for the hundred and seven thousand dollars with a codicil in that if there's a failure in the organization or whatever in six months, uh, that that will be null and void, uh, or 
again, we could fund it the same way the county did for the, the six months and have a reevaluation period at that time, fully understanding we have the money to carry on with our half. And really, the, the what's that going to do to proposed businesses coming in if they can't even see we don't have the confidence in our FedCo? Yeah. Oh, actually, so, so so I exactly. I, I say regardless know. that that I mean we want him to stay. We need to stand behind and say that this is what we we believe in and we're going to fund it. If the county fails, that's the county's fault. But I agree. I, I think if we want people to come here and we can't even stand behind what what what's bringing him here, I'd go find somewhere else. So I, th I think the city needs to make a statement and say we believe in this and we, we want economic development and we fund it and the county steps up or not. We have to make some kind of a statement in there so we're not spending the city tax dollars in the for per se, I hate to think for, for the county, I don't know if that could be done or not. But I know that, you know, like you want to well, and Akron, Bolton all contribute. Regardless, so they would be, the county's going to benefit from any activity in the city. Well, they want all these new taxes and low tax for the fund their jail. They got to realize they got to have jobs to fund that tax. So they need this agency to bring jobs in. Otherwise, there is no new low. -it. And I, I agree with you on that. My only concern is hiring a company um, to build your house and knowing that the contractors having some issues um, with whatever's going on and so there he can't say a hundred percent you know that or even 95 percent this is you know um, we'll have it done in this time i'll still be around in six months and you know, i want terry to stay around but um Thanks, i don't terry. think you know you don't even know you know can't predict with fedco what's going to happen and after the shakedown and what the county's going to do so that's i'm just looking out for I want to move forward with Fedco however I also want to protect um, taxpayer dollars and um, not have them feel like I'm gambling you know as much but I, I do appreciate the optimism of some folks and out of those two options one promotes that we support you and we back you really they're the same thing in my eyes we in six months if there's an issue there's an issue for the year with just a clause to reevaluate, look at it in six months to protect our second half. You know, it is a statement but, of but, good but we are, Yes, yeah, it's a statement of good faith. Yeah, yeah. We are yeah. on board, fully in support. Did you say motion before you started? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear it? Well, and, and, and based on my original motion, that's, <laughs> at that point, and if we then move forward with the uh, second six months, we're we're going to get that much uh, work out of Terry promoting City of Rochester yeah. and not sharing it. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, we just I mean, based wanna... on that, I definitely want to do it to where it's a positive message. To mm -hmm. uh, I didn't bring it up to be negative. Um, so what's your motion? Is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got a motion on the floor by uh, Councilman Heidi to. What was that? Accept a contract with a for a full payment of 107,000 and some change, with a uh, codicil uh, that uh, lawyer Perkins will put together, stating there's an opt-out clause if there's a failure in the organization. Is that something? It, am I my conditioning it on a failure of event? Am I just saying in six months? I, in other words. I, I worry that describing conditions okay. is a slightly greater risk of like right. missing the mark. It, it, it really is six months it's, good or it's, seven months better because it's six months if it's June if it's June thirtieth and that's when the county has to figure it out. If we're in the mm -hmm. last three days of the month trying to wait on them to see what do they you do, you expect a, a yes or no in April when you go back to them? That's when I plan to start the conversation mm -hmm. um, to see what the. It's, just, it's another unknown. I mean, we have no idea. What we're for, for the time frame, let's put third quarter of this year, of, of next year. Third quarter of next year would be evaluated for. That's beginning or the end? Yeah. Any time during. Mm -hmm. 
Is that you're, you're, you're right. Yes, yeah, yeah, anytime May not, quarter. because yeah. yeah, we don't. So we just like we're doing right now at the end of the year for Casey's office, if we're going back and forth or we're waiting on them to make a decision, yeah, we can. Yeah. It could be the last day, and we don't have time to set something up. Does that address your concerns? Reevaluate in the third quarter of 2019. Okay. That seems more time based than the that, Does that sound fair to you? Well, maybe we should yeah. give a specific month of the third quarter. Uh, Any time. My, my expectation is to say you're reevaluating the third quarter, and, and once you've reached the third quarter, either party may withdraw on 30 days. I don't care, second. <laughs> that gives that gives the county ample time. Yeah, I mean it just gives you ample time, and then we're not waiting on that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Motion was made by uh, Mason, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? Okay. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you. you know, at least your guys' votes are lively. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And my recorder stopped working, so. Thank you, Terry. Okay, shout out. We're down to the encumbrances for the 2018 budget. Can I make this real simple? Y'all know what encumbrances are, right? What? What is that? After our discussion, there's actually uh, this year's encumbrances are a little more than what they've been in the past. Um, the uh, you went through. Are there any questions about what we want to encumber or why? Sorry. No, we don't. We regret. Do this all day long with you, don't you? <laughs> you do! <laughs> uh, essentially, they're, they're pretty straightforward. We've got these invoices that are coming in in December. Uh, we will either not take ownership, for instance, the, the police department, they are expecting a new, equi uh, new vehicle to be, it's been on order. We're still waiting on it to get here. They're anticipating it being here, hopefully up and set up and ready to go in January, so we'll be paying out that bill in January. Essentially, that's what encumbrances are, is their bills issued this year, but will be paid out in January. Uh, the one on here that is, uh, I don't know how much explanation, if you need any, is gonna be our four street project. That one is the one that is the most sizable, and that is simply because of <coughs> Some of the challenges and the things that we ran into with that particular project, we were originally anticipating having that done, completed by the end of this year, and unfortunately we ran into some infrastructure issues over there that were, we were not anticipating uh, several delays, so that project had, will now be completed in the spring. And rather than doing an additional, again, I'm trying to avoid the additional appropriation processes and just doing an encumbrance knowing that that project will be buttoned up hopefully by the end of the first quarter. So I just included that on our encumbrances moving forward. Yeah, it's important to know, and I want to make this clear, it, it, it hasn't cost us any more money. It's cost us time. Right, right. We've got uh, contractors who are absorbing some issues. They didn't anticipate that uh, it's just it's cost us time. Yeah, and Ted's right. I apologize. It, it, there's no additional cost. It's just that we want the money that we budgeted this year for that project that we did not budget for next year. Just so because we thought it would be done. So. Um, any questions on the list? Anything no, else to share? No, not on the encumbrances. We're, we're just out. It's just bills coming in now. We're going to pay out in January or with the Fourth Street project be the first quarter. Marty, I would you? move to approve the encumbrances as pre presented by Shada. Second. Moved by Councilman Smith, seconded by Councilman Heidi. Those in favor? Ordinances and resolutions. Uh, first one on the, uh, on the list is resolution 11 2018 2018 budget transfers. You all have a copy of that. Anything to 
to comment on that? Because I don't think anybody has any questions. Um, these are just the budget transfers. We run into a couple of these at the end of every year where um, we just got a, I've got a transfer uh, appropriation from a major budget classification up to another within the same fund um, to cover uh, some over, some expenses paid out. Uh, the park operating, that one was a purchase of equipment that they weren't expecting. And then uh, the redevelopment commission, that was the Nickel Plate Trail, the professional services, they had to go back for some redesign um, issues on that particular extension project for that grant. So Terry uh, had to utilize some additional funding for that, but he had money in his budget, we just gotta move it. Um, do I have a motion for the uh, reading of resolution 11-2018? By title only. I handed you twelve. Button is right here. By title only. Do I have a? So moved. Yeah. So moved by Goodman and seconded by Heidi. Sure. To read by title only. Those in favor? Okay. You're up. Okay. Um, resolution 11-2011. Dash 2018. It says 2011 right there. Oh, that's a typo. Oh, fuck. Read, read whatever's on the teleprompter. 2018. I've got to stand up for the shot of her a little bit. She's just gone through two weeks of uh, State Board of Accountants auditing with five people in here. And we had the exit interview yesterday, and she went through it in flying colors, fellas. Good job. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. I mean, I was totally impressed. Usually, you know, they're going to take your home or something. But no, she went through it in flying colors. It was a good job. But well, and, and let's add, I have a staff member out on medical leave, too. That's right. You have a staff member on medical leave. Now? So. Yeah. <laughs> And I've been running payroll, so. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. I'll read it again. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion to uh, read approve resolution 11 2018? We really didn't have to read it again. Resolutions are only read once. I was so you reading as amended. Oh, yeah. As, as amended. amended. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Those in favor? So it's the yeah, okay. All right. We go on a resolution. 12 2018 the rainy day transfers putting some money in the rainy day fund uh yes. do i have a motion to read by title only <coughs> so moved I'll second. second by goodman seconded by garrett those in favor okay it's unanimous resolution 12-2018 a resolution to transfer funds from the general mvh and park operating funds to the rainy day fund any questions comments then do I have a motion? Move to approve. Uh, Smith, <laughs> seconded by okay. Fitzwater, down at the end. Those in favor? It's unanimous. We're good at this. Uh, okay, now we're moving into a little tougher territory. Ordinance 9-2018, 2019 Water Department Budget, and Ordinance 10-2018, 2019 Sewage Department Budget. And again, to uh, uh, bring you all up to speed, these are presented to the City Council as a, on a courtesy basis, to get an approval from the City Council, although it's a utility and does not really need the City Council's approval, but it's a courtesy thing that the utility presents every year. If you remember, John, this is the one who never vote on Never vote on Never, never once. Never once. Never, 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 never once. Yeah. Uh, after making you read it in, in its entire after, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no I don't have any choice anyhow I'm not talking about it. Uh, do I have a motion to read ordinance 09-2018 by title only so moved second you got that John I do second those in favor and that's unanimous go ahead 
<coughs> ordinance 9-2018, an ordinance approving the budget for the Municipal Water Works of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year ending December 31, 2019, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the Water Works and several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay. Can, can I ask what, is that um, I'm in the miscellaneous expense, that's why I didn't raise my hand, I wasn't sure about that. Is, um, even though it doesn't matter, is that normal, uh, 25000 Yes, that's yes. in the budget every year. Gotcha. Thank Utilities, um, utility enterprise funds operate differently than tax supported funds. And uh, that's why the council, uh, as a courtesy, approves their budget. They're, they have their own, own boards that do the official approving of their budgets and discussions outside of the council. Um, because of them being an enterprise and a user fee instead of a tax supported fee. No, no tax dollars go into our use of okay. supports. Their, uh, their structure is, is, would be more familiar to a business, mm -hmm. uh, their P&L statements as such. And, okay. uh, we are in good shape in both of those areas. We just had our last good. accounting session in Umbaugh. Thanks to the efforts of uh, that young man back there for the water department, and Marcus over at the Waste Street, we're in, we're in really good shape. Very good. Who's Marcus? Uh, Marcus, uh, not here. Uh, you don't know Marcus. Okay, I, I was right in the middle of that ordinance. Uh, do, I, do I have a motion to have to suspend the rules and have the second reading of the ordinance by kind of Ordinance 9-2018, an ordinance approving the budget for the Municipal Water Works of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year ending December 31, 2019, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the Water Works for several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay, any questions? Okay, I would entertain the third reading by title only. So moved. Second. You got Ms. Goodman and Fitzwater. And uh, those in favor? <coughs> unanimous. Ordinance 9 2018, an ordinance approving the budget for the Municipal Water Works of the City of Rochester, Indiana for the year ending December 31, 2019, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the Water Works for several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. And uh, without further ado, I would ask for an approval of Ordinance uh, 9 2018. Those in favor? Signify by raising your I hand. I make a motion to approve. Okay. You make the motion approved. Smith the second. Those in favor? Okay. <clears throat> Same thing with ordinance 10-2018. I would entertain a motion to read by title only. So moved. Smith made a motion. Second. It's water. Those in favor? Okay. Go ahead. Ordinance 10-2018. An ordinance, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal sewage works of the city of Rochester, Indiana for the year ending December 31st, 2019, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the sewage works and several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding 10-2018? Uh, okay. I would entertain the so moved. suspension of the rules in the second reading. Second. Okay. Those in favor? <coughs> All. Go ahead. Ordinance 10-2018, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal sewage works of the city of Rochester, <coughs> Indiana for the year ending December 31st, 2019, and appropriating several sums for the general funds of the sewage works to several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay, any questions? All right, I'd uh, entertain a motion for the, the suspended rules to have the third reading of 10-2018. So moved. Okay, that's Goodman and Thompson. Those in favor? Oh, well, there he is. John's got his hand propped up. Right. Okay. <laughs> ordinance 10 2018, an ordinance approving the budget for the municipal sewage works of the city of Rochester, Indiana, for the year ending December 31st, 2019, and appropriating the several sums for the general funds of the sewage works to several uses and purposes as in the budget set forth. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve 10 uh, 2018. Thompson moved uh, and 
Garrett seconded. Those in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, department reports moving right along. Fire Chief Butler. <coughs> Are you still here? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Tom. For the month of November, structure fires were in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township, mutual aid, one in Henry Township. Had a tractor fire in Rochester Township. Gas leaks were in the city, I believe 4th Street. A utility bills fire, one in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. <coughs> Accidents, three in the city, three in Rochester Township, one in Liberty Township. Medical assist, 10 in the city, 9 in Rochester Township, 2 in Newcastle Township, 1 in Rich, Richland Township, and we drove the ambulance one time. CO checks, 1 in the city. Service details, hung Christmas lights up. Canceled calls, 2 in the city, 2 in Rochester Township, 1 in Newcastle Township, 1 in Richland Township, for a total of 46 calls and 1 drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Any questions for Tom? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Chief Shots. For the month of November, there were a total of 22 accidents. 18 were property damage and 4 were personal injury. We issued a total of 60 warnings, 54 were for traffic, and 6 were for city ordinances. We were told that 89 offenses, 28 for traffic, 56 criminal, and 5 juvenile. Uh, we have a total of 57 case reports, 517 calls for service, and again, those numbers aren't accurate because of midnight dispatch. <coughs> um, 37 lockouts, 5 code vehicles, and 34 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes that those people were lodged for. Um, you see five people were lodged for warrants up there on the top, but three of those also had local charges. What that means is if you find somebody with a warrant, if you take them to jail on the warrant, they might have all additional charges also for <coughs> something illegal in their pocket or if they're doing something illegal. It never, never happens. Never happens. Yeah. Yeah. Very rare. Yeah. yeah. That's all I have, unless you have questions. Uh, would you yeah. like to make a comment while you're up there no. about the CB? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, not CB right now. Issue. No. Okay, you don't have no. any further information nope. on that. Okay. How about the police car? Are we getting any close to seeing? I have no idea. I had a build date for the second week in November. So, John said with the holidays, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and if they have any shutdown at the end of the year, it'll probably be the first of, of January before we see it. Uh, we ordered it uh, the second half of the year. The problem was they quit making the 18th and hadn't started making the 19th yet. So we we're in that in between period, and that's why it took so long. Okay. Any questions for the chief? You're working on the dispatch. Did you need anything from the city council, or you just a matter of getting everything set up? It's just information. Okay. And, um, we've got we're on our own server now. We're we're on Cody by ourselves. Uh, they're operating on Spillman. Uh, we're completely separate. That's why there's the discrepancy in the numbers um, because those midnight incidents aren't being entered right away into Cody when they dispatch our officers' calls. Uh, that's why there's going to be a discrepancy. Um, we're working on securing our own connection to IDAX. That's through difficult, but we're working through it, and it's going to get done. I can assure you of that. This takes time. Yep. Something new. Yep. And working out the budget. <coughs> our own standalone system now. Everything's running really good right now. I think the chief have been really pleased with you and Matt and just putting all that together. It's um, been Matt. That is way above my knowledge. <laughs> I'll be well, the first to admit it's it's Matt Campbell. But and it, Jim it mirrors stating that we have saved a ton of money going this direction instead of the uh, Spillman uh, public safety software. And you guys are to be credited for that. You, you've done done well with that. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you too. Merry Christmas. Uh, Randy Williams is not here this evening. Uh, we are off of 4th uh, uh, Street now for the winter. 4th Street is very over there. It's being buttoned up. All the infrastructure is completed. Uh, the, uh, the roads have been patched. MB has done the patching. And the uh, folks will be back around the first part of February to continue uh, to the uh, East with the uh, widening and thickening of the road and putting in the site out to the side to that area. That will all be buttoned up in the spring of next year. So it, it, it's
detour signs taken down? Or, or is the, yes. If, if, if they're not, they should be very soon. Most of them. Because it's, it, it doesn't require detour. No, no, no. no. Uh, there's good. just, there's a little cleanup yet to do that uh, I had uh, breakfast with uh, Mr. Heidi this morning. I don't know if you know him, Mason. But things are getting <laughs> cleaned up uh, as soon as the weather gets a little better. Stuff out there in the mud areas, you know, it's a little better and they'll be cleaned up pretty good. They patched the road. They patched the road, yeah. Yeah, and we are going to add some sidewalk work over on Ohio Street, take five trees down over there that weren't in the original plan. But after looking at it, it just makes sense to do it. It's going to look very nice when everything's all done over there. Oh yeah, uh, the uh, lighting project in Riddle. Yeah, we have uh, signed up. There's going to be four brand new LED lights installed over in the Riddle area around uh, the intersections and such to lighten the area up over there. It's been pretty dark. The school came to us and pointed that out. We added that to our LED program. It's going to cost us 150 bucks a month for that. Yeah. So the LED program is pretty doggone good. We're saving a couple thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I need to look at that again and see. We might actually be edging a bit over that number now. Uh, that was the first preliminary number. LED is the way to go, folks. Yep. Uh, the, other, the other thing I wanted to report that Randy is working on starting tomorrow, we're opening up a section of Monroe Street up by 9th. So some of that area will be closed off for a couple of days there on Monroe just uh, to the uh, uh, east of the uh, Farm Bureau parking lot there. We've run some cameras and done some extensive research. We think we found the issue with flooding right there. So we're opening up, we're gonna take care of that, and that'll be a problem that's taken 40 years to wrap the arms around. I think we're gonna wow. get her get her knocked, John. That'd be, that'd be great. Yep. That'd be yep. real great. So, yeah. Before we move, is there a deadline? I maybe have missed something on the fourth street project and a lot of folks around the area that have asked and, and i don't know and i didn't know what it was prior to so i honestly am not sure of a target date we had anticipated that it would be completed by the end of november and then that he ran into all sorts of right. issues and now we're looking at uh, the uh, oh uh, february march time frame in okay. the spring okay thank you uh, that's if the ground cooperates. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be weather. Yeah. But, but the, uh, the NDOT grant, uh, we've got until the end of 2019 okay. to fulfill the obligation over there. So we have plenty of time on the grant. It's just uh, the, the headaches of getting it all completed. Thank you. You betcha. Okay, uh, Lenny's not here, Marcus isn't here. Uh, oh, Derek Holloway. I did see HIS over there today. Did you? I wasn't sure if he knew that they were driving around over there. Good, good. I think it was Danny and somebody else. But hmm. Yeah, they, they, I, I'm sure they were. <coughs> I'm sure they were, yeah. Um, for the month of November, uh, the water department did the following duties. We read meters, did orders, repaired and replaced time meters. Low cakes, backwash the filter beds, did shut off, swept them off the plant, fixed the fire hydrant East 9th Street and Main Street. Um, we had a semi decide to bump it and take out the five inch steamer nozzle on it. So that's been replaced and fixed. Cleaned out and reorganized the meter room. Digs that were performed, we installed a new one inch service line for the Fulton County Airport for the new building. Fixed the outside pit at 1603 Wallace Street. Fixed the leak on a 10 inch water main at East 4th Street and Clayton Street. HIS hit while doing 4th Street Stormwater Project. Um, then call outs. I was called out on the 15th at 827 p.m. to 1601 Monroe Street for a house fire. The water was shut off to the residents. And then Randy Carr was called out on the 28th at 1.30 a.m. to the water plant for a temperature alarm in well number five. And the problem's been fixed. That's all I got. Any uh, questions for Derek? I would also mention in Marcus's absence tonight uh, at the Board of Works <coughs> meeting Thursday, 5 o'clock Board of Works meeting, we are honoring Warren Lease, his 24 years of service. Warren is, he officially retired two years ago and has been working on a part-time basis. 
to get uh, Marcus's feet on the ground as the uh, as the plant manager over there, and he is leaving us from that part-time situation, and we're recognizing his 24 years of service at the Board of Works meeting. So if anybody is available, and if you want to stop in and congratulate Warren, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Well, may I ask what the picture of the poor head of the this building was in? That's Riddle. That's, that's, Riddle. that's Riddle School. Oh, Riddle. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Gotcha. I think uh, they were playing with the drone and they uh, wanted okay. to make sure you saw a nice picture. Does it look like Riddle? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was not what you tell me. Okay. Harry. Nothing much, just um, the MSRP Atlas file and on time hand delivered down to Indianapolis. They should be getting results on that in January to find out if we're in the running or not. The, uh, anybody that wants a link to that, it's like a 125 page document. I can give you, if you email me, I can send you a link to a Dropbox account and download it and read it if you like to see it. Did, they, did, Duke, did Duke ever, just a quick question for mayors, did Duke ever get back on the street lights or downtown? They have. Okay. That's what the offense would push it back away, so that's okay. be quite pricey. Oh, all right. Uh, would we be able to say comfortably that by the end of January we should know on the MSRP? I believe it's about the middle of the month is when we're supposed okay. to have an answer. Um, 17. 17. And we'll have an answer or we'll know if we're in the run? We'll have an answer if we were awarded or not. Okay. And you'll know how much then, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we went for the full 600000 That's just a matter of the, uh, how competitive. I think we have it. <coughs> they decide to give. Yeah. So they're going to fund two, maybe three, but you know it may not be all um, facades. It could be some uh, some streetscape projects too are also competitive with this. So it's a it's a shot. Most applicants apply two to three times. So I mean the second and third application process will not be any long, anywhere near as intense as the first because most of the work's already been done. Just, just FYI, a uh, couple things about downtown. We are changing out the steel poles at the uh, south end of town where the banner always flies. I don't know if you noticed the bottom of those, but they are almost rusted through. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Craig uh, Welding has two beautiful aluminum poles out there that they are going to put oh, in there nice. in place of those. Yeah, so they will last. Near State Farm? Uh, yeah, yeah, and they will last a very long time. Okay, thanks, Harry. Okay, uh, area planning uh, commission, that'd be you. Okay. Do you have something? So, yeah, well, I did meet with um, uh, the planning commissioner. It's Cassie. Cassie, yeah. Cassie. Do you want to take Karen Miller's name? Um, and she did give me a binder so but what I wanted to um, go back to was the position that she had available Bob Kennedy's position the citizen member mm -hmm. um, I've already received communication um, that the person that had some interest the yeah. interest wasn't as serious as um, probably David Rowe when did you hear that just now um, a half an hour ago. <laughs> so, so when I was, I was waiting for this moment, maybe an hour ago. Uh, I don't blame you. I would do it. It's all your fault that you have people on meeting. I didn't want to have a sidebar or a special meeting if it was uh, if it wasn't important. So, what I would like to do is I'd like to make a motion to um, appoint David Rowe for Bob Kennedy's position to fill that citizen member position, and I'm withdrawing. AJ Brown. Have you talked to Dave? Yes, he, he's on. Yes. So he's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. 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 The boss says yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, getting somebody that will volunteer. Okay, that's yeah. the yeah. motion is uh, made to appoint David Rowe to the BCN Area Planning Commission by Councilman Clevenger, and the second was by Councilman Goodman. Those in favor? 
Is this going to cost us a lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lost, yeah, lost a lunch. You got a long dog after this meeting. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> lunch. It's 641 uh, again. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you very much. Anything else? Oh, he that's raised well, that's, that's great. No, I know. That, that, I, that does. That cancels out a meeting. Okay. Okay. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've heard from Bitco. Uh, Redevelopment Commission. Anything new to report there, Terry? Uh, not really. Just welcome uh, Phil Bowers to the Redevelopment Commission. I think he's going to be a, a nice member. Um, we changed our meeting time to accommodate uh, a couple of board members. I forget, Shadow, when we said we were going to. Slide our meeting. It's uh, going to be to the last Wednesday of the month at 8.30 a.m. Yeah. So next month will be January 30th. Um, starting with next month, I'll start at that, the, fourth, the last or fourth yeah. Wednesday. The only real project we have that we're working on is the, is the trail um, and getting it completed. So still waiting on the geotech to come out for some boards for the boardwalk. So. Okay. Hardboard, Mason. Hardboard does not mean separate. That's right. Moving right along, Mason. Thank you. Like mine. Mine's doubly good. And I have to go back to the appointment of the media. Who seconded that motion? I did. Frank, thank you. BG. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Council on Aging. Uh, I've never called it that. Before. Council on Smith. BZA is not meeting in December. Council on Aging did not meet. We did have an executive session, but nothing to report here so solid waste and animal adoption chase tree board and ems to the right thing water. Water. has just been going good. Uh, Carolyn Gray gave an update on the board, uh, State Board of Accounts uh, doing their audit this year. Carolyn stated that the State Board of Accounts says that they're happy with what the Rochester Water, Water Board is doing. They advise against paying somebody to invest uh, our money. Uh, let me see and anything else is they, oh yes, one of the most important things that they was presented to the board yeah. on the employees taking vacation. Well, let me thought I forgot it, didn't you, there? I think vacation for the month. Derek Holloway will be on vacation starting 12, 17, 18. We'll return on 1, 2, 19. Other than that, everything's just wonderful. That's changed. I'll be and here next week. Christmas to you, too, Derek. So do we have your cell phone number? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh, sure do. Thanks, John. Any questions for Councilman Garrett? Okay. We have no ADA concerns. Uh, legal department, anything to... Throw out. We had a second ordinance violation uh, trial, uh, successful, this one on um, noise of animals and having more than three dogs. Uh -huh. uh -oh. mm -hmm. uh, that's all of my report. You can't have any more than a three dog night in Rochester. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm all aware of it. No, no, I love that. I love that. One is one. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> second. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas.